Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Ah, welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft mm. here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. It's Friday. Good morning. How Hi, we Jenny. Doing? How are you? Good. How oh. are you, Mr. Sharp? I would like to be greeted first. Good morning, Mr. Sharp. Good morning, Ms. Taft. Why are we being oh. so proud? That's how I want to be. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Sharp. Thank you. How do you do today? I'm good. How are you? Great. Skip, you know, tomorrow is Savannah State's uh, commencement. There are going to be oh. 450 young men and women going to re- receive their degrees. And I want to take a, uh, this moment to say congratulations as you finish one chapter of your life and start to embark upon a new one. Just remember Savannah State's famous motto, you can get to anywhere from here. Hmm. You have been equipped with the tools to become successful in any chosen profession you choose. Hmm. Again, congratulations from one Savannah State alum to another now. Thank oh, you. whoa. Very cool. Well Savannah done. State, baby, we do big things down there. You can get to the mountaintop <laughs> of Undisputed from that was Savannah really State. Good. And they see every day how I beat yeah. you down. Do they? Yes, they do. I, I hope they believe that. <laughs> I'm inspired. we got a lot to get to on today's show. Will the Warriors win without Kevin Durant? Mm-mm. And will Jason Kidd uh, be the next Lakers coach? New day, another option. We are going to start in Philly. The Sixers were on the brink of elimination last night, but they stepped up big time against the Raptors. Philly got huge contributions from all three of their stars. Jimmy Butler had a team-high 25 points, and Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, bounced back after struggling in the series. Embiid had 17 and 12. Simmons added 21 points. Game 7 will be Sunday back in Toronto. Shannon, who you got? Who wins Game 7? I'm going to take Toronto. Skip, I believe this is the reason why you fight so hard in order to get home court throughout the playoffs. Because if it were to go a Game 7, you must feel very comfortable that having that game in your building. Hmm. Teams normally play better, role players play better, and you have the crowd behind you Mm -hmm. to uh, give you a little uh, uh, boost. Um, But they need to get up to a fast start. Hmm. Um, You don't want to have that doubt creep in. They're trying to erase demons of the past. Skip, we know what happened last year. They were the number one seed and got swept. We know what happened the year before. They were number two seed and got swept. So the playoffs have not gone very well for the Raptors over the last couple of years. They've changed, you know, different coach, <clears throat> got Kawhi now, uh, Danny Green, uh, they traded for Gasol. They don't want the same thing to happen again. Different roster, same Raptors. Hmm. So, But I do believe that they will win game seven because I don't know, can I, can you going to tell me um, Ben Simmons is going to give me another 21-point game? Because Jimmy Butler has been their best player throughout the series. With the exception of the first game, I believe... I don't know, game three? Yeah. But you see, okay... That was the Joel Embiid game. Okay, what about game two when he went 30, when, when Jimmy Butler went 33-10? and 10, right. And then game four, and then yep. game five. He's been consistent okay. throughout. The, I'll give you that. Now, we know Joel Embiid is the best player, but in this series, Jimmy <laughs> has played the best. Yeah. And so I just can't put a whole lot... And like you said, am I going to get this kind of performance from Joel Embiid? He looked a lot more active last night. Mm -hmm. Didn't have great, you know, great numbers. What, 17 and 10, 17 and 12? But a plus 40? I don't know if I've ever seen that before, Skip. That's huge. Have you ever seen a plus 40? (laughs) I don't remember. I had to look twice at the number. It's a little bit of an anomaly. I'm not sure it really says much, but go ahead. Well, he was plus 40 when they were plus 40 (laughs) when he was on the court, minus 29 when he was off the court. This game wasn't as close as, you know, the final score would indicate, Skip. So, watching this game last night, I saw Philly front run a little bit. A couple of shots go in, and they started going bonkers. And Steve was telling me, because I don't (coughs) listen to the sound, they had a big lead, Toronto cuts into it, and all of a sudden the fans are booing. (coughs) Yeah. I believe it will be a different situation this time around, Skip. I believe Toronto with Kawhi. And they have a lot of guys that have Game 7 experience, and I think that's going to come in. You know, that Game 7 at Kawhi, you know, in the NBA Finals, Danny Green's been to Game 7. Uh, Paul Gasol has been to uh, – Paul, Mark Gasol has been in some Game 7. <coughs> so I like mm-hmm. Toronto to win that game, Game 7, and move <coughs> on to face the Milwaukee Bucks. So, <clears throat> I picked the Sixers going into the series. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something in my throat. I, I will use that if you'll give yeah, it. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. Is this from Savannah State? No, 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 no,
Woo! I've actually got hairspray in my mouth. <laughs> it happens. I hope it's not my fault. It no, might be a little that, bit. <laughs> that's Nusheen's fault. It was. Got it? <laughs> Get my water Thank back. you. <clears throat> I picked the Sixers going in. I'm sticking with the Sixers in game seven because I'm going to say this one more time. I do not trust number two oh, in the biggest God. situations. If this game is close into the fourth quarter, as I think it will be, number two will fade. We saw him fade <clears throat> late in game three, and we saw him fade in different ways in game four, even though in game four he did hit a big shot at the end over the walking dead that was Joel Embiid after uh -oh. he got that switch. To me, the Raptors at heart are still the Raptors. The new DeMar DeRozan is number two. Now oh, it's, stop he, it. he, it's he the North, okay. and we'll see how he responds under huge home game seven pressure in his new digs. He won it out where he was often a complimentary star he in San Antonio. He felt underappreciated. He felt yeah. underappreciated. Did he? Okay, well, we'll see how that goes. And I'm sticking with the Sixers because I think we saw again last night they're just the better team. They are definitely the mentally tougher team when – when they want to be, mm. when they need to be, when they come out with fire in their eyes and in their stomachs. Okay. And last night they did. They got pushed backs to wall, and I think they'll still be backs to wall when they go back to Toronto for game seven, where they did win game two. So it's not like this has been strictly home and home no, through this right. series. And last night to me was a tour de force of just how dominating this team can be when it feels like it. Sure. Why did it feel like it? I guess just because it got humiliated, it got shamed, it got heavily criticized over the last 48 hours, and it said, okay, watch this. Right. And when this team says, watch this, this team is good enough to beat the Bucs in the next round. Again, it's got to win game seven. It is. It's good enough to beat the Bucs because it has that much star power and firepower at the top. So what did we see last night? Obviously, as you point out, Jimmy Butler is just a cold-blooded killer. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler will will his team to crucial wins because he demands of his teammates that they raise their games to his level. And he did it again last night with 19 points in the first half. That set the tone. He wasn't that great in the second half because he didn't really need to be yeah. because other guys began to rise and shine. And what about Ben Simmons? You have been highly critical of yes. him, and you should have been highly critical. I have no issue with that because he deserved all of your criticism. And last night, when his button was pushed, don't ask me how, why, but button got pushed. He was dominating last night. He is 6 feet 10 inches tall. And as Brett Brown said, I think yesterday at the shoot-around, to Brett Brown, he's the fastest player he's ever seen on a basketball court because at 6'10", he's got long strides, and once he gets unleashed in, in any breakaway situation, he puts so much heat on the defense because he gets there so fast, mm -hmm. and he either kicks it to somebody because he can, he can pass it, man. Yeah. He's got a great eye, mm -hmm. or he can just beat you to the rim and get – again, we know he doesn't have much of a shot, but, but if he gets to the rim, somewhere close to the rim, the ball's going in the rim, and he's going to shoot a high percentage. He made 9 of 13 shots last night. Well, all of us in the pain, Skip. Okay, and but I'm saying, but if he gets there first, yes. he's going to score. Prior to last night, he had averaged 28 points over the last three games. He had 21 yep. last night. Okay. So the question is, will Toronto be able to keep him out of the paint like they did the previous three games? I believe they will. Yep. Are, you go are you willing to trust? What you saw last night from the Sixers, are you going to trust that? Yes, okay. I'm going to trust that. When push comes to shove, and, and again, now we get down to the bottom, bottom line for the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm -hmm. When Joel Embiid inexplicably feels like it, he's easily the best player on the floor in this series because he's the best player in the East post-LeBron. Mm -hmm. And he, he's on his way to becoming one of the best big men ever. And we, we didn't see it in the first half last night because he basically walked through the first half. And then I don't know what happened in the third quarter, but something special happened in the third quarter because he started to either recover from his many viruses that he's had or maybe his knees just uncreaked a little bit. Maybe they started to feel a little better. Yeah. Maybe his meds kicked in. I have no idea what happened, but something happened to Joel Embiid in the third quarter because that was a tour de force just in the quarter. Ten sure. points, six rebounds, and 
I don't know if you happen to catch this, but he blocked two shots late in that quarter. Oh, oh, now oh, you Oh, yeah. But we Kawhi dumped on oh, everybody. Oh, oh, okay. Can, can we maybe see those two <laughs> shots? I don't know. The two shots that got... Oh, 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 did you see that? That's a body bag. Is, is he still alive? Yeah, no. Did, did they have to? He lost the ball going uh, up anyway. Oh, did he lose the ball going <laughs> up? Look, 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 look. Get that he, stuff out of he here. Didn't lose the ball <laughs> messages, messages sent. <laughs> he made number two look small. He he told number two, you you don't belong uh, in this paint. I own this but paint. But you remember Sunday uh, when he dunked on everybody? He just dunked on nobody. Everybody. Nobody. They just watched him. Okay. Mike Scott, come on. No, no. Really? Yeah. Gay, he got uh, uh, and B got some of that too yeah. up under the rim. You know, I I. You know, it just struck me last night. Number two's feelings might have been so hurt by those two blocks that he might need a day off on Sunday. No, he, he might good. have to we sit good. this one out. We good. You sure? We good. He's he's capable of just saying, I just I'm I'm aching. I my my you, thigh hurts. You you hope you hope that's what the case may be. Mm. But I don't believe. I mm. believe you'll see a virtuoso. Mm. I believe you're gonna see something special I from Kawhi. Seen it yet. Yes, you have, Skip. Uh-uh. You saw it Sunday. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yes, no, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I saw yeah. him miss four free throws in the fourth that's quarter. What, did you see him make eleven or twelve last mm-hmm. night? Mm. That's what I was working. I said, hey, make me think, Kawhi. Make mm. him make him. Mm. So guess what? That's what's gonna happen. Well, I mean, for Toronto, you fought all year. And this is what you'd hoped, Mm -hmm. that if a game, if it gets to game seven, Mm -hmm. it's going to be in our building. Mm. And they got the team. Granted, we know it. Look at Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler and and Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris. Yes. But we have yet to see them play really well consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jimmy Butler has been consistent for the most part. But we haven't seen that consistency from Ben Simmons, nor Tobias Harris. And I guess that Mm 72-hour bug that Joel Embiid had, maybe took – Pepto or K.O. Pepto, something. Know. I don't know. He, you said he felt better. He looked a little better in the second half. Now we get mm-hmm. an opportunity to see what's going to transpire. Yep. So I know we got some do on this one. Mm. I know we got mm. do on this one. Well, but, I know I got six and a half points because that's what oh, Vegas no, says it oh, is. No, yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I got uh, six uh, and uh, a half. No, Skip, we're not doing that. Why not? We're not doing that. No, Well, no. well that's what Vegas told me. You told me. Huh? That the Sixers are the better team. Yeah. That was your, so why would I give six points to the better team? Well, because Vegas told you to. Mm-hmm. Huh? How much mm-hmm. conviction do you have in number two? I am convicted. Faith? Do you have faith? I am convicted. Huh? Yeah. Huh. Yep. The new DeMar DeRozan? Yeah. Yep. They call him Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do they? They call him the gospel. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, to me, they call him the claw. And he got clawed last <laughs> night by Embiid. He go deliver him. Yeah. I guarantee you he delivered a Raptors from, from to the evil. Yep. Yes. Hmm. So we got two cases, right? Nope, we don't. We got six and a half points for one case. No, 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 yep. no, Skip. Come on, man. Oh, it's your team. <laughs> you, you jump bandwagons. <laughs> you, you, you love the Sixers all year long, and all of a sudden you don't love them because I don't love number two, and now you love that bandwagon. No, 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 no. Yep, no. I know how it works. Oh, first it's of okay. all, you saw how jo- Joel mm. Embiid missed, like, what, 10 of the last 11 games mm-hmm. in the regular season? Mm. He missed a game in the first round of the playoffs. Yep. He's been herky-jerky in this. I can't, be, I can't put no faith in that. Mm. I can. Okay, well, that's what I'm talking This about. team Two needs g- to be pushed to the brink, and then well, it are. responds. So it's to the brink. And your team, your new team, and you're betting on the wrong horse again, no. your team has demons, home game seven demons. This, this team has come up small and failed that city repeatedly. And now it has a chance with a new star to break through and do something it has not done. Yes, that's why, okay? they, got, that's why they got him. That's why they that's got him. That's why they were willing to mortgage. Think about what mm-hmm. they gave up. Mm. They gave up DeMar DeRozan, who wanted to be there when no other free agents wanted to come mm. or stay there. Chris yeah. Bosh left, Vince Carter left, Tracy McGrady left. He was the only star mm-hmm. that wanted to be there. Yep. And they traded him for an opportunity. Mm-hmm. There's no assurances. There's no guarantee that Ka- uh, Kawhi is going to stay. Yep. But they say, you know what? To, for an opportunity just to have that for a year. Yep. Who knows what could happen? Mm. This is why they got him. Mm. So you go move heaven and earth to get a guy like that mm. and watch what happens on Sunday. Mm. There's no question in my mind. Oh, well, then give me six No, nah, I'm not going to be able to Well, uh, what do you mean no question in your mind? Nope. Well, then put your money where your mouth no, is. No, Skip, because I, I tried to get you to give me a bet the other day. Give me 20 points. I bet you they won't be up by 20. Okay, but I gave it to you, and you, then you backed no, 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 off. No, no, when, no, no. I, when I accepted with such conviction, you said, okay, points. I'm scared. You admitted Straight you up. were that's, scared. That's what you do. Okay, Straight you would have won, but don't come crying to me because Straight you backed up. off. Straight come up. Come on, let's go. No. <laughs> I, I, I'm a six-and-a-half dog. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
That's what you're going to feel like on Monday, picking the Sixers. So it's a question of who, who are the Sixers? Are they the ones in, in game five that fell behind by 40 points in the yep. fourth quarter? Or are they the team last night back home that, that had a 24-point lead in the fourth quarter before winning by only 11, but it was much worse. Yeah, than yeah, it was. It was. Okay. No. But you think, you, do you think Kawhi is going to let that happen in his building? Let He's it. He's going to have that glow. He's going to start mm. glowing. Mm. Who's the master? Okay, I'm going to do you a huge favor. I'm going to just hand you another case back. I will take four and a half points. You you want to do that? Two and a half. I just I made a huge. You know I what? Sure, you know, I, give you, I, four and a half. I give you three and a half. You, you got the claw. Three and a half. No half. You got half. the claw. Three and a half. Four and a half. Three and a half. Going once. Going, going twice. Twice gone. Uh-huh. Nope. Nope. Guys, come on. Oh, I don't like Because he's scared. Out here. He's scared. Oh, that means my team. Joel Embiid is the new beast of the East. I don't oh, even know Jimmy if he'll Buck- play or not. You do know he's going to play. He's like a game time decision every night. Am I right? Yes. Oh, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is mentally way more mentally tough than number two. Well, he is. Okay, well, that's what... But the best player is 21. Two. Two. Two, one. Two. Two, one. Two is actually number Claw one. Claw is a better player yeah. than Joe L. No, I, I got this. Four and a half. You, you'll, you'll do that. I'm good. Come on. Nope. You, you've I'm got sorry. the claw. You, I do. You got the best two way player in basketball. And right? we loaded. Look at all these. Ooh, we got a bunch of guys. Serge Ibaka played three games, seven. Mark Gasol, three. Experience. Kawhi, three. Mm-hmm. Danny okay. Green. Yeah. Y'all, Jimmy Butler played in one game, seven. Yeah, I got no experience. Amir Johnson seven. played in two. J.J. Reddick has played in five, yeah. though. Mm-hmm. Okay. He definitely has. You, can't, you count on J.J.? You think J.J. is going to continue to hot shooting? Mm-hmm. He is not hot shooting. He made three out of ten threes. That wasn't that great last night. I was going to say, last night. My team didn't shoot But he that made well. a contribution. Yeah. He showed up. Ben Simmons showed up. Mm-hmm. You believe that in the game seven? Mm-hmm. Game seven is where legends are made. Come on, four and a half. That's all. It, it, it's it, I, I just conceded two and a half point, two points. No. You got the better team. Yeah. You got Joel Embiid, who's the beast of the East. Jimmy Butler's an all-star. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 ben Simmons is an all-star. You got a great shooter in J.J. Reddick. Mm. Why you want a little measly points from me? Give me straight up. My best player's got West Nile. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and what about not. my guy? You I'm tell the me. Second half. And my best player, you tell me in the fourth quarter, has the yips. Yep. He so does he's okay. Yips. So mm-hmm. got straight mm-hmm. up, Skip. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. I'll, I'll think about it. Okay. But I, uh, it's four and a half because I just conceded to you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jeez, you got. He's no, scared, Jenny. He's no scared. guts across scared. the table. He's scared. Yeah. No guts. Mm-mm. So we're just going to end it like that? We can't come to an agreement? No, Bye. we got we got Bye. a couple more segments. Bye. I think as, as the show progresses, he'll start feeling good about himself. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm up 34 cases. Ah, oh, what the heck is two cases? Come on, you got Nick Nurse on your side. He's got experience. He's been there and done all this before. What has he done? <laughs> what has he done? I Nothing. don't know. No, you got Brett Brown. Yeah. Oh, Spur. He's been with Pop. In so many games, yep. sevens. And he might be back with Pop next year. Oh. No. He said they were ready, though. He mm-hmm. said, I knew early on mm-hmm. at Shoot Around that this team was going to come play. Okay. Just decide, it's just whether or not they do it again. In a Noah. Hmm? Dinosaurs. Hmm. Rise. That Dinosaurs? T-Rex. We got I'm, this. I think I'm going to get me a wig, get me a cornrow rig yeah. for Monday. Hmm. Really? Yep. Get me a number two jersey here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. We got a lot to talk about before that one, though. The Warriors, will they win tonight without KD? We'll talk about his injury next. Don't forget, you can check us out every day on the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius XM. We'll be right back. No mercy. Kevin Durant is out for the rest of the series against the Rockets. The team announced he suffered a mild calf strain and will be reevaluated next week. Despite the loss of KD, Steve Kerr still said the team is in a great spot with KD. Game six tonight in Houston. Let's take a listen to more of Kerr on Durant. Yeah, I think it's good news. Um, you know, calf strain. Um, he's had them before. He's responded well, and uh, obviously, we're disappointed he won't be able to play. Um, you know, in this series. Uh, but uh, you know, if we're able to to win the series and move on, uh, it looks good for for his return. Um, you know, in the not too distant future. Well, we'll just find somebody on the bench who can give us 35 points, <laughs> and, uh, two blocks, and 11 boards, and nine assists. Uh, he's been the best player in the NBA uh, in the playoffs. He's been phenomenal, and uh, so um, you know, it's obviously a huge loss. But uh, our team has a lot of confidence. Um, they trust each other. They've won championships together. Um, 
So we, we come out and we, we give it our best shot. All right, well, look, it could have been worse. Could've. But Shannon, now that we know Katie is out, at least for now, who will win this series? I'm still sticking with Golden State, Skip. I believe they take it in seven. <clears throat> would I be surprised? Would I be shocked if Golden State won game six? No. Knowing how James Harden likes to pull a disappearing neck, for the series progresses, the bigger, the more meaningful the game uh, are. No, I wouldn't be shocked. Because I think the thing is, when we look at this Golden State team, we get so admired, and rightfully so, with Kevin Durant and his, his, what he can do. Um, as uh, <clears throat> Steve Kerr mentioned, he's averaging 35 points a game, and he's doing it in a very efficient manner, mm. shooting 53% <laughs> from the floor, 40-plus percent from the three-point line, 90% from the free-throw line. We've never, ever seen this before in a playoff. So this is what he's doing. So we know what he represents, Skip. But if you go back and look at it, four of their five starters have won a championship without, without KD. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the first year they won that championship, when they figured it out, mm -hmm. when they inserted Iggy, the starting big guy was Bogut. Mm -hmm. So I believe Lo uh, 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 Kevon Looney is a better offensive player than Andrew Bogut. Now, maybe he doesn't protect the rim as well this year as, say, Bogut did back then, Skip. But he's a better offensive weapon. Mm. And Steph will be more aggressive. Yep. Clay will be more aggressive. Draymond, you see when, when, when KD went out, you see the yep. emotion that uh, a Draymond started playing with. He hit that big three, started grabbing all these boards. Mm -hmm. The ball will move. See, you have a great luxury with KD because when things are going bad, Skip, we can just dump it down to him. Big fella, go do what you do. Mm -hmm. And we got two or we got three or, or we got an and one, the, uh, the three-pointer, the hard one. Yep. I'm going to ride with the Rockets, but there ain't no way I'm picking that team in a game seven on the mm. road against the Warriors mm. with James Harden. who with, come Without the best player on the planet? James Harden, mm. who comes up smaller than Minnie Me, mm. and Chris Paul, mm. who look like he got cement blocks on his feet at times. Oh, no, mm. not in the game <laughs> seven on the road. Mm. But I'm going to take him tonight against my better judgment, knowing what I've seen from James Harden mm -hmm. in game six in his very building mm -hmm. with the best player out. Kawhi was out for the Spurs, mm. and they lose by 117 points. Mm. I saw Chris Paul the last couple of games. I saw what he did. Mm. No, 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 no. I'm not picking mm. him in game seven, but I'm going to take him tonight, Skip. Mm. But the Warriors are winning this series in seven. Mm. By the way, can Chris Paul take his State Farm agent on the floor with him so, to get him out of trouble on the floor? Because <laughs> no. he's always there for him. He lives with him, right? He does. And always he just there. always and, and things go wrong. And if you could take him out on the floor, he could say, Chris, I got this, right? Well, well maybe you should bring Cliff. Yeah. Because maybe Cliff is a little less injured, had a little less wear and tear on his body, and he might be better than Chris. Chris has been playing like he is Cliff, <laughs> right? That's what he's been doing. So, I am picking the Rockets tonight and in Game 7 only, only because I picked them before the series exactly. started. And I don't flip like other people I know, Did but I, I don't flip. I had the Warriors in seven okay. from the jump. Uh, okay, but there have been other moments on this show. Okay, maybe the Raptors. Gonna, maybe a couple of times. <laughs> okay, yep. maybe. I would not bet a drop of dew on either of these games <laughs> if, in fact, there are two games because I'm with you. I will not at all be surprised, certainly not shocked, if Golden State just goes in there and does what it did on March 13th, which right. is say, we don't need Kevin Durant. We got this one right here. So, I'm with you. I was ashamed for James Harden the way he disappeared the other night after KD had gone out late in the third quarter because that was an all-time disappearing act. Yes. It wasn't that he went down in flames as in went 0 for 8 from 3 in the fourth quarter, as he is wont to do. Right. He just said, no. I'm, I'm going to avoid that one tonight. So right. he just, he truly disappeared. So tonight, his legacy is back on the line. Mm -hmm. Tonight, this game is all about James Harden. Mm -hmm. Tonight, he has a chance to atone. <clears throat> he also has another huge opportunity to reinforce his reputation as a regular season wonder, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because in Houston today, that, that slogan, fear the beard, I think it's starting to take on a negative connotation because they're smart basketball fans. Right. They're sophisticated. They know what has been happening regularly to him in big playoff closeout games. Right. So they are fearing the beard for another negative reason like, uh-oh, yeah. uh-oh, we, we, we fear. Interesting. And, and again, 
James Harden in the playoffs goes from potential Mount Rushmore in the regular season to Mount Rush less. Like he, he's, there's got to be some Mount Rush less out there where, where all the regular season wonders belong on that in the end, right? right? Where you can't trust them. So what have we seen in these playoffs? Once again, this is why I love the NBA playoffs. And some people get worn out because they're seven game series. Mm-hmm. But the beauty of a seven game series is it either reveals or exposes who you really are. Yes. That's what I love about this. Tonight is a defining game mm-hmm. for, for a lot of players yeah. on the court, for Chris right. Paul, for Steph Curry, That's why everybody for James looked, Harden. You make a very, a, a very interesting point, Skip, because the playoffs, I feel, in all sports mm-hmm. reveals who you well, are. Well, they do, but it, the deeper you get in a seven-game series, yes. like you, you, you can't hide. You, you played one and done. One and done. You, 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 you're, I, this is it, and that's going to reveal a lot, too. But in these, it's like you could have a big game in game two. Right. But, but what are you going to do in game six and seven? Who are you? Who right. are you really? Do you have, as I call it, basketball backbone? Mm-hmm. Do you, James? I'm not sure because I don't have any proof that you have a basketball backbone when it really matters right. the most. So you brought up one of the meltdowns. But history of meltdowns for James Harden. 2015, close that game at Golden State. Western Conference Finals. Yeah, not a pretty sight. James Harden set the playoff record of 12 turnovers in a game. Mm-hmm. It's hard to have 12 turnovers in a game, but he did at Golden State. He shot two for 11 that night and 0 for three from three. The threes are the ones that always get him under pressure because he just loses it. He goes south. Uh, you mentioned the 27. Uh, I'm sorry, 2017 game six. It's at Houston. Mm-hmm. It's the closeout game six. There's no Tony Parker and no number two for San Antonio, and they lose by 39 points? Mm-hmm. How can you do that? James Harden in that game totaled 10 points. He had six turnovers. He was a minus 28 and plus minus. He shot two for 11 and two for nine from the three-point line. It's just that that's an all-time meltdown, and a lot of Houstonians still haven't recovered from that game, right? right? Mm-hmm. Then how about last year, 2018? Mm. How about... No Chris Paul, but you're you're uh, you lost him in, at the end of game five. But you're up three to two with a game uh, at Golden State, and then a game in your house, a game seven. Right. You're you're James Harden. You're you're MVP, right? right? And Correct. You might even be MVP again this year. I don't know. It's between him and Giannis, him but and Giannis. but he's got a shot. Yes, he does. Okay, you're that guy. And what did James Harden do in those final two games? He shot six for twenty five from the three point line. Six for twenty five. How about game seven at home? He shot two for 13 from three. Mm -hmm. In his playoff career in fourth quarters and overtimes, James Harden is two for 16 from the three-point line. Okay, it's just showing you again and again, no, 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 no. Can't live up, can't live up, can't live up to regular season You know, Skip, I'm hard-headed. My grandma used to say, boy, you you got a hard head. And maybe I'm hard-headed. So against my better judgment, I'm going to take the Rockets in a game six. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say James Harden will snap out of this bunk mm-hmm. in a game six, especially in his building, and he will play really, really well. Like I said, against my better judgment, because what has history showed me? Mm-hmm. History has said, and those who do not remember and study history mm-hmm. are destined to repeat it. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm get destined to be in the same boat I was in a couple of years ago, Skip, yep. when he faltered down the stretch in a game six at home. But you, I, with no KD, Skip, I just can't believe how they lost that game. Hmm. No KD. You win that game, and guess what, Skip? This is for the Western Conference yeah. Finals. Should have been. It should have been. Yeah, they had it. Steph will be, because here's the thing, Skip. When KD's on, once they, when KD arrived, I believe Steph told said, look here, bro, you come here, you wanted to be, you want to take more shots? Go ahead. Although I'm the reigning MVP, I want it unanimous. Go ahead. Hmm. It seems like they take a very back seat to KD, Steph and Clay, because like, if I am I shooting too much? Because remember, there's a reason why he's on our roster right now. Mm-hmm. Because the guy that he played with, he felt he shot too much, and the ball didn't move enough. Mm-hmm. So if, am I shooting too much? So. More times than not, they would defer to him. Yeah. Skip, the moment KD limped to the locker room, you look at Steph Curry's demeanor. You look at Klay Thompson's demeanor. They're like, uh-oh, we ain't got anything to worry about. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody else going to be worried about, are we taking too many shots? You see Steph's quote about 
we were in the huddle right after KD limped off. Yes. And he said we were smiling at each other. And I didn't know how to interpret that except that. to mean, and it's easy for him to say it in 2020 hindsight yeah, after they won yeah, the game. Yeah, exactly. But were they really smiling? Were they saying, okay, we got this. Yes. We don't really need him. We're, we're not all about him because the narrative through the whole playoffs. Yes. Right. They go as he goes. And he went to the locker room. But he knows because he said later also uh, mm. KD's been carrying us throughout the entirety of these well, playoffs, okay. which he has. He has. Because yeah. had, if he hadn't put up those 43s and those 50s, the Clippers might have got him. Because remember that closeout game, he got 50 against the Clippers. Yep. So I just believe that Steph will go back to being Steph. He'll be ultra aggressive. The ball will move crisply, yep. sharply, and yep. on, on a timely manner. The picks will be set better, mm -hmm. and these guys will – don't underestimate Stan, uh, uh, Steph and Clay. Yep. Don't underestimate this Warriors team. There's a reason why. March 13 at, at Houston. Yeah. Clay had 30, Steph had 24, and they yes. won 106 to 104. They okay. be I believe they were smiling. Not that KD got hurt, but they were like, you know what? They think because KD went out. They got us now. Maybe <laughs> watch. That. Maybe. Watch, watch what happens. Okay. And then boom, boom, boom. Steph right away mm. goes to work. Then Clay all of a sudden goes right to work. Mm. Offensive rebounds. Mm. So we're going to see. James Harden, this see. is about you, James, bro. This is about you. This is and, about you. And, and Vegas is just heaping pressure on James Harden's shoulders because it has, it, it, the original point spread was seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Seven and a half? Really? So they're just saying no KD, no hope for Golden State, basically, right? You know, Skip, they do have in-game. I wonder what the line went to once KD limped off. Hmm. I wonder in what could – if you could have bet then. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Did Houston become a slight favorite? Yep. Or, so, it, so it's going to be very, very well, interesting. Probably they – I would have believed they would have, Skip. Yep. Okay. Huh. Especially because, I, if I'm not mistaken, they ended up taking the lead. They took like a one- or two-point lead, the Rockets did. They took a one-point lead. Yep, right away, mm -hmm. thanks to James Harden. He mm -hmm. made a shot, a floater. Yeah. They gave him a, their first one-point lead. That's correct. You can, there have been a lot of great regular season players, but if you want to be remembered, yep. if you want to be talked about 20, 30 mm -hmm. years from now, yep. play well in the playoffs. Okay, and it is all about James because I just don't expect that much from Chris Paul. I've been critical of him in the past when, when he was more in his prime. Mm -hmm. I used to call him CP0, as in zero rings, <laughs> because he was revered, another, as a regular season star. Mm -hmm. and, and if I go back to his early days in New Orleans when they used to play the Spurs in the playoffs, the Spurs were scared to death of Chris Paul mm -hmm. because he had that bulldog mentality. He was a little bit psycho. Mm -hmm. He would go a little bit over the edge into the gray area, but he could score at will yeah. at about six feet tall. He can't do that anymore. No. So I'm not sure his legacy is on the line because I don't know that we can expect him to do what we expect James Harden to well, do. Well, Skip, for a long time, he was the best player on that New Orleans team. He so was? you know as, the, oh, as yeah. the best player, the superstar, you get more accountability. Mm -hmm. You get more of the blame when things don't go well. Yep. This here's all about James Harden. Mm -hmm. huh. This is all about Harden because you can't put up those historic numbers in which he pick, uh, put up and then come up small mm -hmm. in the playoffs. No, no, no. Skip, if he'd average, let's just say, I mean, because he's a superstar, if he'd average 27 points a game yep. and they, they're in this position, but you average 36 and you go and you have five, six, seven games in which you score 70 points, you have three or four games, you go 60, mm -hmm. and you go 32 straight games, only Wilt has more consecutive 30-point games, you do that and then come up small in this moment? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not letting you live that down. Mm -hmm. You're not getting over that. Mm -hmm. Because guess why? And no matter what he does, Look at LeBron. LeBron has gone to so many finals since what happened in Dallas. He's played so well, mm -hmm. but we always go back. No, we ain't no we, you. And LeBron critics and mm. haters mm. <laughs> always go back. But you know how small he, I've never, ever seen a superstar come up so small. Mm. That's what you always say. I'm going to predict that that's going to come up very soon on this show right now. Like as we speak, it's oh, about really? to come up again. Yep. It's about to come up. You, you'll see. You'll see. Set him up too well, but, but to finish off James <laughs> yes. Harden, another legacy is on the line for the visiting team, and that is Steph Curry's. And I've demonstrated right. to you many times, mm -hmm. he's come up even smaller than he is in a lot of big playoff moments. Mm -hmm. Well, not the other night. Not at home. No. Because once Kevin left, Steph Curry went crazy, crazy great. He took the game over. He yeah. scored 15 points down the – 16 points down the stretch. Yeah. 
and save the game and the series for Golden State because Houston should have won it and Steph did win it. Right. And Clay was pretty good too. But tonight at Houston is a big Steph night because I think we're back to the 73 and 9 mm-hmm. Golden State Warriors. Yeah. We're back to the two time, two straight year MVP, Steph Curry. Yeah. Hmm. What you got? Well, I think he's got a lot. I think he's going to play with supreme confidence. In Don't this worry game. about his light skinned teammate, mm-hmm. Old Clay. Yeah. You remember when they were down 3 mm. 1 in that game six yep. in OKC when he dropped 11 threes on their head Do and I. went for 40? Mm. He's capable. Now, mm. you talk about can go nuclear. That dude can do it. Nobody can get as hot as, as Clay mm-hmm. Thompson can well, we in saw a short it, amount of time. We saw it early in the game the other night. He made five or six shots. Yeah. Okay. So. Huh. I like how you guys are talking about these playoff-defining mm-hmm. moments. Yep. I feel Here like we go. we're about to see something tonight. This is going to be the James Harden game for better or for worse. That's, we will that's remember how you this. Yep. That's a good way to look at it. No mercy. The Lakers have had some defining moments lately. Yeah, Maybe some to forget, good. but here's the thing. They're still without a head coach. Ty Lu rejected their offer earlier this week, which has L.A. looking for other options. The Lakers are expected to interview Frank Vogel, but our friend Rick Buecher tweeted that Jason Kidd should be the top choice. Buecher said about Kidd, quote, there isn't another coach available to the Lakers who has LeBron's respect and has developed young talents and their skills and trust. So, Shannon, Mm -hmm. do you agree that Kidd would be a good fit? Yes, I believe he would be a good fit, and he may be the only and the best fit. (laughs) Uh, Skip, the thing is with LeBron, LeBron knows how difficult it is to win in this league and to win championships. So Jason Kidd will already have had that. Now, Lionel Hollins is another guy that's being mentioned. He did win a championship with the Portland Trailblazers back in 77. He was on that Trailblazers team. Um, uh, uh, Vogel, we know what his exploits were in um, Indiana. He kept running into LeBron-led teams in Miami and in Cleveland. Um, LeBron also respect coaches that have won, seized the game, uh, thinkers. Mm-hmm. That's what Jason Kidd was. Jason Kidd was a thinker. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if he had the greatest offensive talent skip, but I, if I'm not mistaken, he's second in assist all time. Uh, he's a very unselfish mm-hmm. player. Yep. LeBron played with him in the uh, 2008 Olympics, yep. thought very, very highly of him, thought highly of him when he was a coach of the Nets. Mm-hmm. So I think he comes with and, and will – Garner a lot of respect Mm -hmm. because he played the game. He played the game at a high level, and he won Mm -hmm. at a high level. So I think that's something to be said for that. But Skip, this process has gone completely off the rails, and this is what happens when you have people in positions that they're unqualified to be in. Mm. Linda and Kurt Rambis, I'm sorry. They can be as good a friend. They can be close as they want to the genie bus, but they're unqualified for this. Rob Palenka, he's unqualified. He only got that job because we know why. (laughs) And then Jeannie, had Jeannie skipped... Because of Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. Had Jeannie cut her teeth under her dad, on that side of it, marketing and sponsorships are not the same thing. Skip, they're not even in the same building. Nope. The football people are at one place at Dove Valley. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the other side, mm-hmm. the marketing and the sponsorships, they're down at the stadium. Yep. So it's two different areas. Mm-hmm. And we thought Jim was terrible. Was doing a terrible job. Mm-hmm. Jeannie must be his twin. Because mm-hmm. she's like, Jim, I can do you one better. I can do worse than you can. Mm-hmm. And nobody thought someone could come in and be worse than Jim, but Jeannie's proving everybody to be a liar. Yeah. She's like, I got this. Mm-hmm. Hold my drink, Jeannie. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I'm worse than my brother. Mm-hmm. This is awful. Good. Skip. You know this. It's go- I wouldn't be su- Would I be surprised if they go into June mm-hmm. without a head coach? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Okay. So back to Jason Kidd. Our man Rick Buecher yeah. reported, or I think it was really an educated Kidd, opinion Kidd, that yes. he wrote, that LeBron would have respect for Jason sure. Kidd of these candidates remaining. He'd yeah. have the most respect for Jason Kidd. I'm here to ask a big question. Mm-hmm. Does Jason Kidd have deep respect for LeBron James? Because I'm sh- not sure about that. In fact, I have big doubts about that. Interesting. And by the way, this is where I'm going to bring back up 2011 the epic fail, the Mm -hmm. meltdown by the superstar LeBron James in his first go-round with Dwayne Wade in the Heat. On the other team, the starting point guard who played 36 minutes a night was Jason Kidd. So Jason Kidd witnessed up close and personal Mm. the melting down of LeBron James. So he saw that. And 
I'm going to remind everybody that Jason Kidd is a tough guy, and he is especially demanding on the defensive end. And so what happened, he coached his first go-around as a head coach was with Brooklyn, mm-hmm. the Nets. Nets. And, and they it had was New Jersey at the time. New Jersey, but it was 44 and 38 that year. Mm-hmm. And they, they had a big first-round win. Uh, they won a playoff series, mm-hmm. and then he actually got traded to the Bucks for two second-round picks. Well, why did the Nets want, him, want to get rid of him at that point? Why, why did they accept the trade? Right. Because he was demanding more and more power inside the organization. He wanted far more input mm-hmm. into personnel decisions, right. and he finally rubbed too many people raw mm-hmm. above him in the organization. Mm-hmm. So they're like, good riddance, we will trade you and get two second-round picks back. Well, d- is that the right guy for Jeannie Buss's operation? Because she, she wants no part of that. Kurt Rambis wants zero part yeah. of that. Mm. Well, probably not, Skip, because they're like a guy like Luke Walton that lose games and don't yeah, care no, about power. Doesn't control. say anything. Yeah. No, no, I know. And and he's like best buddies with Jeannie, so yeah. so it's all, oh, it's it's all like feel a, good. It's like her son, like because her son. Phil okay. treats him like a son. son. Okay. I've heard all of right. that. Oof. So Jason Kidd in Milwaukee was hard on the young players, so, so that he's going to be really hard on these young players, yeah. and he was especially hard on everybody on the defensive end. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, as we all know, and I don't shame him and blame him for this, but LeBron, as he enters his 17th year, he just can't lock down on the defensive no. end the way he used to. Yeah. He has to concentrate on orchestrating the offensive end. Right. Well, Trust me, Jason Kidd's not going to sit still on the bench for that. Yeah, he will. They'll you're like flash. LeBron, you're like LeBron, you know, we know you. That's do what you say. do. Yeah. I, I don't think Jason Kidd is built that way. LeBron that, is not anymore. He's not Ronnie Lott anymore. He more Ed Reed. Mm. Yeah, cover some ground. Okay. Yep. Rome, disrupt. Yep. Okay, I got it. But Jason Kidd is a stickler for, for textbook defense, connected defense, and he's just not – he will – hold LeBron's feet to the fire on the defensive end. LeBron is going to – he's not going to love that. But here's the thing, He's going to kick against that. What Jason Kidd was trying to get the young – remember what you said, young guys. LeBron is going into year 17. What guy you know sitting in the chair in year 17? Guys can't play like that. Mm. Jordan Jordan couldn't play no D like that, Skip, in year 13 and 14. Mm. Think about it. You're 13 and 14. He couldn't, you can't sit in that chair like that. But when he was LeBron's age, last year in Chicago, he was first team all defense. But that was year 12. Mm-hmm. That okay, was year but, 12. But it was this also age 34. But you, but you already said yeah. LeBron at this point has played three, the equivalent of three more seasons than, Le, than Michael Jordan okay. had all at right. this point. So I, I just think the thing is, as a coach, you're like, you have, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. But you know when you got players – Let's just say for the sake of argument, Coach Belichick steps aside and someone outside of Josh McDaniels mm-hmm. got that job. Yeah. They're not going to upset Brady's routine. Mm. Brady, you do what you do. It, been, it served you well. LeBron, keep doing what you're doing, bro. No, but the, the big dichotomy difference in what you're talking about is Belichick just coaches defense. He doesn't have much to do with offense. Mm. So in this case, it's both. Like Jason Kidd would coach both ends of the well, floor. Well, see, the, the thing with Coach Belichick, the, the advantage that he gives Tom Brady, him being the mind that he is, one of the greatest minds, he gets to tell Tom, Tom, this is how I would tag mm-hmm. that formation. Okay. This is, if you did this, this is what I'm doing. So that's why Brady's been so great. Got a great mind. Mm. But now we got two minds. Yeah. Yeah, mm. old, old Jason Kidd. Mm. Great, you know, Jason Kidd had a great mind skill. Oh, did he? Woo. I mean, he ain't like old, the, the, the brain. They call that man the brain. I don't know. Jason's in the ballpark. Yeah, in the ballpark. Yeah. But he's selling peanuts and Cracker Jack. Okay. My guy at the plate. Mm. About to hit a home run. Really? Yeah. Your guy's not in the playoffs. Yeah, don't, see, there you go. I see, you know. keep doing low blow. Yeah. Okay, Skip. Well, he, he, he's not at the plate. He's he's at the studio. No, he's right? he, he, in the stands. Yeah, I mean. yeah, he yeah. writing he writing writing yeah. Space Jam three yeah, okay. because he's the, it. because of the, because of the chaos that's going on in Lakers. Okay, now for one other made for Lakers curveball, I would like to toss into this Please. madness. Okay. So yesterday, interesting quote from the commissioner Adam Silver, and I'm going to read it very quickly. Go ahead. He said, "The goal is going forward. It should be roughly 50/50 of the new officials or referees entering the league should be female." Mm-hmm. He said, "Same for coaches, by the way. So 50/50 of all the new coaches coming into the league should be female." Last quote from Adam Silver: "There's no reason why women shouldn't be coaching men's basketball." 
So, who is the most prominent female assistant as we speak? It's the one named Becky Hammond in she San Antonio. She might be Antonio. the only one, Skip. There's one other one oh, yeah, they, with the Wizards. Okay. Um, who is that? Christy Tolliver. It was okay, on the yeah. bench with, yeah, 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 okay, with the Wizards yeah. this year. Okay. But this year, Becky Hammond graduated, actually, from the back row of assistants to sitting right next to Oh, so, so she in the catbird seat? Yeah, that's the catbird seat. <laughs> Oh. And, again, I watch every Spurs game, and in the last couple of years, she didn't really participate in the sideline huddles. This year, she yeah, was she was that. talking a lot in right. the sideline huddles. So, is she on the verge, maybe? Of, so, who is running the Lakers as we speak? Jeannie Buss and Linda Rambus. Both of them are female. So, is it possible that Adam Silver, who, trust me, is having input into this situation, he's trying to monitor it from afar, but he will – often suggest to owners, maybe you should think about this or that. Would he suggest that they think about hiring a female coach? Big, yes. Biggie, don't do it. Huh? Biggie, you don't want to be in that situation. Okay, is it just too big a circus for her? Yeah. W would it not be the all-time epicenter of the NBA universe if Becky Hammond was the new head coach of the Lakers, coaching LeBron James in his 17th year? It would be something. But, again, th in that circumstance, LeBron could then become the co Coach, for sure. I mean, he would just have to. Oh, no, but then everybody's going to say he wouldn't do that to a man. No. If that was a man, LeBron wouldn't do this. But he would do it to a first-time head coach. LeBron's going to do that. Skip, you remember what he did to Eric Spolster when he walked off the court? Shot mm. him a quick bow to let him know, hold yeah. up, bro. Yeah, okay. Don't, don't talk to me sideways. Okay. Well, just me, I have a lot of respect for Becky Hammond because she did. It's all the way back in 2015, but Pop – asked her to coach the summer league, the Spurs mm -hmm. summer league team, and they won the championship. So I think she's got game. I yeah. think she could do this. Is this too crazy and big for her? But, but it almost would fit in with, with what's happening. It, it's almost like the, the predictable conclusion to all this would be Becky Hammond would be the head coach. I hadn't thought about it, Skip, but mm -hmm. I don't hate it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Becky wait for another opportunity she can hold her own we're not yeah. worried about that it's more the lakers drama. yeah is anyone going to be a that, good fit that, at this point do you want foolish, this job that's foolishness that they have going on i know but it's just intriguing that that two women are running the lakers and by the way we have some other female owners just quickly there's gail benson who after her husband pelicans. passed away took over pelicans and uh anna Cronkey is is running the nuggets because her husband runs the Rams, the Rams. so, so he, she's taken that over. And then um, Gail Miller in Utah, yeah. yeah. Utah. Her husband has passed away. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it, but, but it's, so they're not. What was quote yesterday? Huh? From what yeah. was their quote? It was from Adam Silver yesterday. Huh. How, we want 50-50. But the timing I mean, of this, it. this is his cause. This, this is yeah. what he is pushing for. He wants female representation among his referees and his coaches. Well, they, 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 the NBA score is really, really high when it comes mm. to equality. Mm, do they? Both as far as, I you know, know minorities, I, I as far it. as women and no, blacks and, and, you know, different uh, uh, genre than that. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I love Adam Silver. He yep. gets it. Well, he wants this to be his legacy. Yes. When, when he leaves this job, he wants to have achieved this kind of 50-50 huh. representation. Well, if Becky can hold her own with Pop, maybe hey, she could hold her own with th the Lakers. There is, there is truth to that. <laughs> if she can get through Pop, that. Pop, you know, Pop, ain't, Pop is not like that. With huh? Pop, Pop is different. He hmm. would be hard to work with, though. Oh, yeah, yeah he's going to be hard. But he's not going to be hard. I don't believe he's hard with her like he would some of his male, other male assistant. Mm. Yeah. What about you, Doka? He's he been, he been on the front row. Ime, I love him. Stud. Hmm. I don't know why no one has made a run. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Mr. Lee, me, me, uh, me alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he's famous for. Oh, yeah. We're going to switch gears, guys. <laughs> he can hold his own. To Odell, because the guy just keeps talking about his new team. Lots to that's say. It. He hasn't been there that long. We'll discuss next. No mercy. Odell Beckham Jr. hasn't been a Cleveland Brown for that long, but he's already making headlines. Odell told GQ recently that he planned on being in Cleveland for the next five years and turning them into a dynasty like the Patriots. Well, yesterday, Odell clarified his comments on Instagram, writing, quote, never meant the Browns are the new Patriots or going to be the new Patriots. I uh, just have great respect for what they've done, but definitely recognize the work that has to be done to get there. Shannon, does Odell have a point? No. <laughs> no. Hold on. You know what, Skip? You went to Vanderbilt, which mm. is the Harvard of the South. Mm. 
I went to SSU, which is the Harvard or the HBCU. Mm -hmm. So we both are very well educated. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't graduate magna cum laude like Skip. Mm. I graduated. Just, just cum. I didn't make it to magna. But I graduated. Ahead. Thank you, Lottie. Me too. Yeah. I graduated. Thank you, Lottie Jr. Mm. Like yeah. me. Mm. But this is what he said in GQ, Skip. <laughs> I plan on being here for the next uh, five years, trying to bring as many championships there as possible, turning the Browns into the new Patriots. What did I miss? I read fairly well. As you see, I read that statement. <laughs> you I, you did well. that very well. <laughs> I comprehend. That was highly impressive. <laughs> I comprehend even yeah. better, Skip. Yeah. What did I miss? I'm not saying we're going to be turning the Browns into the new Patriots. Mm. And then he said we didn't, we didn't read that part. He says, what player wouldn't want to be like the Patriots? Uh, you, because I'm trying to think. See, everybody says, I want to win like the Patriots, but are you mm. willing to sacrifice like what the Patriots players do? Mm. You see, the, the old adage is, Skip, everybody wants to go to heaven. Mm. Nobody wants to die. Mm. Everybody wants to win like the Patriots, but nobody wants to sacrifice. Mm. Tell me the time you saw Julian Edelman act like Odell on the sideline when he didn't catch a pass. Tell me the time you saw Gronk do it. Or those running backs when they don't get 50, 15 carries in a game. Good point. Tell me the time you saw Julian Edelman or Gronk or anyone go on vacation <laughs> before a playoff game. Didn't turn out so well. No. You see, he talks about that. Oh, it's easy. See, that's the easy part is talking about it. Mm -hmm. The sacrifices that those players make, very few players are willing to make those sacrifices. Because if you did, you might have a little bit more success. Mm. So Odell, you miss me with all that, bro. I'm talking about you want to sacrifice. No, you don't. Mm. You want to get your numbers. Yep. Just think about it. Edelman might catch five passes one week. He might catch one the next week. Yep. The guys might get 20 carries. They might get five. Mm. And nobody says a word because at the end of the day, it's about winning championships. Yep. Odell want to win. There's no doubt in my mind he wants to win a championship but he wants to win that championship his way. Hmm. His way is 105 catches, 1,400 yards, and 13 to 15 touchdowns. And if I can win a championship like that, now we good. Hmm. I ain't trying to win no championship catching no 55 passes. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the thing that Edelman does. Edelman says, you know what? The sacrifice is here. I catch one pass. I do a great job blocking. Mm -hmm. I open it up for someone else to have success. Mm -hmm. And then down the road, my time will come. Hmm. Odell hasn't figured that out yet, hmm. but okay. Quick point of clarification hmm. before I launch. You got it backwards. Harvard is the Vanderbilt of the North. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Harvard is the Vanderbilt oh. of the North. That's, okay. that's the truth. But that says you were still the, you know, the Harvard of the HBCU. Is it? Let that be told. Yeah, yeah real talk. Yeah. yeah. Did, you make, did you make it to commencement? I hope so. Yeah! yeah did you? I won't. You walked? Yes, and they said, with well, all the parents of these graduates, please stand up. My brother stood up. Aww. Okay. Yeah, because he'd oh, been taking good. care of me. He, he been taking care of me for a all minute. Right. Well, that's so nice. Sweet. Yeah. So he made it to your commencement. Yeah, he made it. Wow, yeah. good yeah. for him. Now, back to our man Odell. <laughs> I'm going to put this back in perspective because this is what I believe happened. Remember, Odell was back in his former city, New York City, mm -hmm. at a huge gala event, Met Gala. Mm -hmm. And his feelings had been rubbed raw by the fact that his team, his former team, had dumped him yeah. and sent him packing to Cleveland, as he calls it, out there, right? <laughs> Still figuring out yeah. where exactly. Yes, exactly where is that. So, sure, when GQ started to interview him, it's, it's like childish, wounded pride talking where, where you're going to say, Oh, well, I, I got a much better situation now because I've joined the new Patriots. Yes. Right? That's what he's trying to tell you. I'm, I'm much better off now. I don't need these and giants. Plus I'm, and plus, I'm more happy. You yeah. know, he, he's never, been, never this been this happy in his nope, life. Nope, nope, he's never been this happy. So it started there, and then it just ran off the rails because <laughs> what he proceeded to do, whether he knew it or not, was he painted an even bigger target on the backs of all of his new teammates. <laughs> We're the new Patriots? Now, one of his new teammates can stand up under that kind of pressure and expectation, and that is the quarterback. So when he went to the new Brett Favre is Baker Mayfield, Baker will be just fine with that because Baker probably believes in his heart of hearts, I'll, I'm going to be better than Brett, Brett Favre, Favre right? I, I That's how he you. operates. Yes. So that won't crush him. But there are going to be other teammates who, under the scrutiny and, and the new expectations of the new Patriots, they're going to hear this all year. It's going to become 
a, a, a negative mantra for this team. Yeah, but you're the new Patriots. That's what Odell said, yeah. right? He's your new leader, yes. right? New Patriots. And by the way, it's week eight, October 27th at Foxborough. They get to play the old Patriots. Yeah, the new Patriots play the old Patriots. Uh, Let's see how that work out. We'll be uh, watching that and, one. And do you think the old Patriots quarterback won't, have that stuck in his craw that, oh, these are the new – you know how he gets. Mm -hmm. He just goes a little psycho when things like this get said mm -hmm. about his team. So the point is that, that Odell is saying, I always aspire to be great. So he considers himself great. And, and he's had stretches of greatness. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen the potential greatness. Right. And it started on in that first year on that fateful Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yep. And he made the greatest catch in the history of catches on used car, right, brand yes. car. But, but again. In a losing effort. In a losing effort. And he was actually out of that game for a while. Then he came back. But they lost. Yes. And the point is, if, if you're that good, if you're that great, then you rise above what any nobody would say about you on the Internet. Well, this is all in response to all the abuse he took from, quote, unquote, nobodies on the Internet. So is he not a prisoner of, victim of? reading his responses on all of his social media platforms because yeah. that's why he responded this way. Right. He's trying to clarify, and, and he completely backed off new patriots. And he's trying to put it in the context of, well, why shouldn't I want to be the Patriots? Wouldn't everybody want to be? Because you're not willing to sacrifice okay. what those okay. players well, sacrifice in order to yeah. be great. So he didn't say in the first quote that you read, he didn't say, we want to be the Patriots. Right. He said, we are. That's exa we, we are the new yeah. Patriots. And he obviously... Hadn't, he hadn't even set foot in Cleveland yet to, to speak up. He hadn't really worked out with the team yet. Yeah. And he's not played a single down of football for the Cleveland Browns. But you're already pro proclaiming your new team, the new Patriots? Skip, oh let me ask you a question. What do you think would happen if an Edelman or a Gronkowski or a Hogan or an Amendola would have all of a sudden they don't have the amount of targets that they thought they should have? Yep. And they sling their helmet on the sideline or they kick the kicking net or they just act the fool on the side. What do you think Coach Belichick, forget Coach Belichick, what the hell you think Tom Brady going to do or say? They just won't stand for it. No. no! No matter how good you are, you're going to be gone. Seriously. That's a good point. How would yeah. he handle it? Because you know what? He did that because he knew he could get away with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You not put. You don't see it. Look at Ocho Cinco, how he behaved when he got there, compared to what how he behaved when he was in Cincinnati. Yep. Look at Randy Moss, how he behaved there, compared to how he did in Minnesota and in Oakland. And remember, at the end when Randy began to misbehave even a little bit, you got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. out. They, 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 they they'll give you a. Uh, they'll like you know what? You got a clean slate here. Yep. That's Albert Haynesworth. Mm -hmm. They said we Albert, we gonna get. Oh no! Don't even worry about it. Coach Belichick, hey, Coach Belichick, he ain't going to fall in love with yeah, nobody. I know. I know. He yep. get you up out of there if you're not doing your job. But, see, that's the thing. Everybody talk about, oh, I want to win. I want to win. Yeah. But you want to win your way. Yeah. Your way is catching all the balls, getting all the yards and all the touchdowns. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, oh, Julian Edelman rings has just as many diamonds as Tom Brady. Yep. And the, the 53rd guy has just as many rings as uh, 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 diamonds in his ring as, mm -hmm. as Gronk. Yep. That's what these guys don't understand. There's a price to be paid for yep. success. Mm -hmm. A January, a February return, which is the Super Bowl, must be paid on a daily basis. Yeah, it must be. And okay. I don't know if these guys are willing to do it. I definitely, when I see on the sideline, that's not sacrifice. Yeah. Remember, Belichick did let Gronk get away with a lot of frat boy behavior yes. off the field. Yes. After hours. Yes. Yeah. He let that go. Yes. Because, according to all there, Nobody practiced harder, and nobody knew the offense better than Gronkowski did. Oh, I believe it. And Tom Brady believed in Gronkowski's football IQ. Yes. He trusted his instincts to be where he was supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. Gronk ain't throwing no helmet if he ain't nope. catching with five passes. No, he doesn't do that. Huh. Julian Edelman ain't throwing no helmet. No. Nope. Mm -mm. I tell you what, I wish Sonny Michelle, I want Sonny Michelle mm -hmm. to say, you know what, I'm supposed to get 30 touches and come out in the press conference and say, I need more touches. Mm. Mm -mm. What do you think will happen, Skip? Well, he just won't. Yeah. And he, th they drafted him because he was a really good kid at Georgia. You and know, he, like, did more, he did yeah. more catching than yeah, running because did. Chubb was the, was, was the, the big he back that came. He was the, 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 the workhorse, I agree. I was like, man, mm -hmm. these guys here.
Every time we talk about Odell, I think about Freddie Kitchens and the <laughs> pressure. He needs to set some high standards yep. quickly for this team. And remember, w- team. remember what Freddie Kitchens' response was to Odell's first salvo? Yeah, stop. We didn't do you-know-what last year. Yeah. Uh-huh. We didn't win anything. Yeah. We finished third in the division. I don't know where all of this stuff is coming from. Uh, it's coming from this guy. That's a perfect match because yep. guess what? Odell ain't do nothing last year either. <laughs> they finished third in the no, they finished last in the division. No, last. He should work on getting a playoff. So they per- that's a perfect match. To his name. Huh? First. That's a perfect match. Yeah. Odell and the Browns, because okay. neither one of them accomplished anything. Let's see what they can do with it to put them together. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk about a different game. Will the Sixers find a way to beat number two and the Raptors at game seven? I'm thinking Going about to game this seven. Bet right now. I'm Chris Broussard <laughs> makes his prediction. Okay. Maybe we'll have a bet from these yeah. guys. <laughs> no mercy. Well, the Sixers stayed alive last night with a blowout win at home against the Raptors. Philly got huge contributions from all three of their stars. Jimmy Butler had a team-high 25 points, and Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons bounced back after struggling in the series. Embiid at 17-12, and 12, Simmons at a 21 points. Game 7 will be Sunday back in Toronto. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Chris Broussard. Uh, Chris, you said it when you got out here, they stay alive, but... Mm. Who do you got game seven? Well, you you guys know I picked Toronto Mm -hmm. in six, but I'm going to stay with them in seven. This was the tough – you guys know when you pick, you obviously want to pull for your pick. Right. But this was the rare occasion where I picked Toronto – but I really am kind of pulling for Philly. Just they're more I exciting. They're the more exciting I'm story. If they yep. get to the next round, yep. Yep. that'll be a more exciting series. Uh, so Philly showed me something last night too because every it was, everything was pointing to them just laying down. You know, Embiid was getting tons of criticism, and rightly so. Ben Simmons, same thing, and rightly so. And they both showed up. Embiid wasn't tremendous offensively. But he's been pretty good defensively in that, in the whole series. And so I thought he showed up. Obviously, Jimmy Butler's been great. But all that said, I do think Toronto wins it. I'm going to trust in Kawhi. And uh, Kawhi, trust. I, good, I think – Good luck with that. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I believe Toronto – rest on their laurels at times. I think they, they get complacent. Game one against Orlando, they're thinking we're going to destroy Load these guys. Up. They lose. I think after blowing out Philly in game one, they kind of let their foot off the gas, find themselves down 2-1. I think last night they're thinking, we got this. This is over. Philly's about to lay down. And obviously they get hammered. So in Toronto, I know that crowd's going to be going crazy. Yeah. Uh, they really believe, one, they got a chance to win a championship. You know, all these teams now with KD, KD, yeah, yeah, because we'll see if he gets back next series or if they advance. So they're going to be rowdy, and they're going to try to impress Kawhi, too, even more. And so I think it's going to be a a great atmosphere. I'm going with the North. Mm. I took Toronto. I'm taking Toronto um, with you, Chris. The thing that concerned me, they played like – they played game six. Like, we got game seven in our building. We good. So even if we lose this one, we going home. And I don't like I that because no, there ain't, ain't no guarantee. Right, you, right. Hey, you never know. You a stepped on a, a, a strained calf away because yeah. something happened to and Kawhi. And they lost twice at home. Yeah. If something happens to Kawhi, it's over. So if you can take care of business a game early, you take care of that. You, you do all that. But unlike you, I have the utmost confidence, mm. the mm. utmost faith. Mm. You know what they call him the gospel? Matthew, Ma- Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They call Kawhi. They call him so the, he the gospel. gospel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And he going to deliver. That's straight blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> he would have done that. I, I know you want to talk about, oh, right. just these free throws. Mm-hmm. If we can get it late into the mm-hmm. fourth quarter, he'll crumble. No, he won't. At 22 years old, only uh, one other person has won the uh, finals MVP younger than that, and that's Irving Magic Johnson, one in his rookie year at 20, and again a year late, two years later at 22. So and, I'm going to ask you one more time. If you have that much faith, faith in, in your man, if, if you're just spitting faith, you, you're, you're just coming out of your oozing, chair. Oozing. You're oozing faith mm. in number two. Yeah. Give me the six and a half points. I'm not going to be able to do this. Why not? No. <laughs> well, that, that shows not? a lack of faith. No, that, no, that's just the no, spread. No, that's, no, that's all that no, is. No. Because you think, you're think you talking like it's going to be 15 or 20 points. No, no, no. Which no. It, uh, but remember, the last time they were in Toronto, they fell behind by 40, the Sixers, Sixers did in the fourth quarter. They were up down 40 points. Well, Joel and B. Got I do think 72. they'll win by more than six. Uh, uh, I would give you that. Joel and B. Listen, our expert is I telling would, you, I would, I would give take him it. That. No. 
Why not? <laughs> I tell you, you know no. what's good. How about this? What are you talking about? What are you waiting for? I'll give you four. Accepted. Oh, finally, <laughs> you guys. We were going to argue all day about this. Four it is. Thank final you. Final answer. Okay. I got this. Are you, do you want to talk some No, more? I'm good. You're I'm good, good. Now? I, I got me a bit now. Okay. <laughs> we got, got one or two cases. Bet. One or two cases. One. Okay. I'm good really enough. good with this. <laughs> okay. I picked the Sixers before the series started. I'm sticking with them to win game seven. I do not trust your man number two in a close, hard-fought fourth quarter of a game seven. I just don't. And we saw him start to disappear and unravel and fade late in game three and late in game four. And I know in game four he hit a big shot at the end, but he also, that was the second shot he'd made in the fourth quarter. He missed four free throws that kept that game close, and he had two crucial late turnovers. Just trust me on this. I know what I'm speaking of when it comes to that guy. Mm -mm. Can't really trust him when it's he the North. And you said they're trying to impress him. Well, the, the, uh, again, he, he, he might not impress them. That, that might be the issue. Got this, 29 yeah. and 12. Skip, okay. you do remember yeah, he in, that delivered game, last night. in that game mm. seven, in which they lost as a 21-year-old, mm. he had 19 and 16. Mm. It got overshadowed he's because... Surrounded by Hall of Famers. Where, okay. He's in a comfort zone. By the way, how, what did he shoot from three last night? Help me out, I forget. Four, four, or 0 oh for four. 0 oh for four, thank you. I just wanted to... Yeah, you for the record. But the where, record. where are you getting this okay. narrative that he can't play okay. just, down the stretch, watch, that he crumbles? Watch. Okay, well, did you see what happened in game three? Go look at that one. They're on this tear in the third quarter. He scores no points in the fourth quarter from the field. He no, he's on a tear throws. in the third quarter. He was. And then all of a sudden when it was time, when you got them, you got hand on throat of the, the home team Sixers. You just disappear. You score no baskets in the fourth quarter. That was a James Harden that he pulled. You, know, you like took, that? And then we took it over. Okay. We took yeah, it over game okay. five. Yeah, you took it over. Yep. Well, last night, my team that used to be your team, he loved the Sixers all year. <laughs> I, I know. I, I, you were with the Sixers. Yeah, until, you know, these Joel and B started getting sick every other day. Mm -hmm. Right, right. My team took it over last night because that was a tour de force. And I will give you, it has been a tour de farce a, a lot of times <laughs> in this, yes. these playoffs. But last night, even though they trailed by 40 late in game five, last night they're up 24 in the fourth quarter. They just said, watch this. This is what this team can be when it wants to be, when it needs to be, when it has to be. And last night, it knew it had to be. Backs completely against the wall, and they said, watch this. And it started with their, their leader, as Brett Brown calls Jimmy Butler, the adult in the room, and he is that. When, when he is, his button is pushed, he is a cold-blooded killer. He will will his team to a crucial win because he will demand that everybody come with him. And he scored 19 out of the box last night in the first half and set the tone. You trust that? You I trust do that trust that. Seven. Yes, That's I do. That's the thing. Jimmy Butler has never been in a game this big. Okay. All right. Wow. We'll see. Never. Played, yeah, well, he played what? I mean, Skip, has he's, he? only, he's only been past the first round one time. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So he got one game seven he's on the He's never bench. been in a now, game I don't, like this. I don't know how to explain this about Ben Simmons. and He has rained criticism on Ben Simmons, and as you said, rightfully so. I get that. But Ben Simmons has special written all over him in moments. When his button gets pushed, as we saw in game three at Brooklyn, all of a sudden you say, whoa, he can do some things nobody else can do. He can get down, up and down the court the way nobody else can. He can fly, and he can pass the basketball, and he has good hands around the basket even though he's not a shooter. But he can score at a high level by making all of his shots. He's 9 out of 13. Remember at Brooklyn that night, he was right. 11 of 13. He'll just, if he gets his hands on the ball up around the rim, he's going to either dunk it or score it. We're going to put a forward I, up. Yeah. I agree with what you just said about Ben Simmons. Here's the problem. We have no idea okay. which Ben Simmons, right? I okay. I mean, look at but this you series. You say that about everybody the, in no, here. No, no, Skip. The previous no, three games, he had 28 right. points. Like, he had 21 last night. You putting faith in that? Push comes to shove. I do. And what about, what about yeah. your guy? You okay. remember the other night, he was doubled up. Oh, my tum-tum hurt. <laughs> and now he up there flying in the, in the game before when he was flying the airplane. You Fine. have no idea what he's going to eat I tonight. don't. And it's going to ruin, Joe, ruin yeah. him tomorrow. Joel Embiid <laughs> feels like it, literally feels like it. He's the best player on the floor in this series. He just is. Kawhi. On both ends. Nope, I'll take the seven-foot-two guy over that Two guy. Two times. Yeah. 
Okay. Good. How, there ain't been a whole lot of two-time defensive players that you have the have the. Okay. Yeah, but he was a one-time quitter. No, no, stop it. No, 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 see, <laughs> that's where it all. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, he did. But he didn't quit yeah. on the Spurs. Yeah, and you know what? Messages got sent late in the third quarter last night because oh. my guy Joel, <laughs> I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, he came back he to came life. To life. He, he lives. I agree. He lives. Second he, half. He walked through the first half, and then all I don't know what happened. How do you explain? In the third quarter, he just took the whole game over on both ends of the floor. He had ten points and six rebounds and two blocks. Yep. Guess who he blocked late in the third quarter twice? I don't know if you happen to catch this, but it was number two that he blocked. He made him look like number two is what happened. You know what's good? Look at this. Whoa, did you see that? Eat this. Speaking of eating things. Kawhi was too far. (laughs) How about that? Oh, God. Is that not eat this ball? That will not happen in the north. Oh, God. How about about this one? Get that stuff out of here. I mean. Come on. Hey, 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 Chris, you know, Joel, <laughs> Lazarus, and Bede, because yeah. nobody, right. nobody rises more than he does. I mean, one moment. No, nobody falls more than yeah, he does. Yeah, one moment, you know, his stomach, he's doubled up on the sideline. Mm-hmm. The next minute, he's getting 33 and 10. Okay. He's an all-time great, and then he disappears again. That's a big guy to be disappearing. Is it possible that number two's pride will have been so hurt by those two blocks that oh, he'll not. need Sunday off? No. He might. He good. He, no. he takes. I, I think he's like this, hmm. steady. Yeah. Steady. Stays Emotion. off. Stays no off. ups, no That's downs. Just the media. steady. Stays off. Stays off. Stays off. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <you'll know. laughs> That's why they gave Jenny just did a flat line. Just like That's a what flat he is. Line, He's right? steady. That's, <laughs> That's why they gave him 22 games off. And mm-hmm. guess what? The next team that's looking, they're going to give him 30 if he's going to give you 30 and 12 on a nightly basis in the playoffs. Why are you encouraging is that what LeBron the days off? In Philly? What you need? <laughs> I got four. That's all I need. What you Thank need? you. Yeah, I saw you coming. I tell you what. I don't need the four. I don't need the you four. Just pick the Sixers three. are going to win this game. If you're right, this is a serious coming of age for these Sixers. Mm-hmm. If you're right, that next series, I think going to be It'll be the next crazy. series. Because they ain't going to do no with Giannis. Hmm. It'll be a great one. If they oh, win the oh, night, oh, if they win, oh. win this next game. Embiid and Giannis. What about the t- turnaround, though? Won't Milwaukee have a week? They'll have an advantage, but I'm just mm-hmm. saying Philly's got well. the talent. They the question the talent. is up here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in here. And yeah. so... If they show that, I got be JJ, but I, I got, got Tobias. I'm just glad we JJ, settled you on the yeah. bet. Yeah. Tobias. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what, what JJ is going to give me. I don't know what Ben Simmons is going to give me. I don't know what MB is going to give me. Mm. We'll see. And I don't I know, know what only on, I know it's Butler, and I know Tobias. Heard heard and they mm. <laughs> Before we have that game tonight, we got a big one. Will the Rockets finally take down the Warriors? No KD. Here we go. We'll discuss next. No mercy. All right, back to the NBA. Kevin Durant is out for the rest of the series against the Rockets after suffering a mild calf strain in Game 5. Despite the loss of KD, Steve Kerr still said the team is in a great spot with Game 6 tonight in Houston. Let's take a listen to more of what Kerr said about KD. Yeah, I think it's good news. Um, You know, calf strain, um, he's had them before. He's responded well, and uh, obviously we're disappointed he won't be able to play. Um, you know, in this series, uh, but uh, you know, if we're able to to win the series and move on, uh, looks good for for his return. Um, you know, in the not too distant future. Well, we'll just find somebody on the bench who can give us 35 points, <laughs> and, uh, two blocks, and 11 boards, and nine assists. Uh, he's been the best player in the NBA uh, in the playoffs. He's been phenomenal, and uh, so. Um, you know, it's obviously a huge loss, but uh, our team has a lot of confidence. Um, they trust each other. They've won championships together. Um, so we, we come out and we, we give it our best shot. All right, Chris Broussard still with <coughs> us. Uh, look, it could have been a lot worse with KD, but right now he is out. So who wins the series now? I am sticking with Golden State. I'm going to say they do it in seven, but I wouldn't be surprised in the least bit if they get it done tonight. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned yesterday that KD was a luxury, right? Mm-hmm. A great luxury, not a necessity. Beyond that, he was a crutch that you know, look, if we don't play our best, we got KD. Mm-hmm. When things aren't going right, we can always go to KD and he's going to deliver us. Mm-hmm. He can get his shot off whenever he wants. Nobody can stop him, so on and so forth. And that can lead to a little bit of complacency. Mm-hmm. And so I think without that crutch there, 
they know they have to be at their on their A game and they have to play terrifically. I said mm-hmm. yesterday as well, they're 29 and 4 mm-hmm. in 3 years with Steph and no Kevin Durant. Guess what that averages out to over 82 games? 72 wins. <laughs> Sound familiar? What? 73 in the regular season without the KD. Mm. So this is still a great team. Andre Iguodala has turned back the clock. Mm-hmm. He's playing his best ball of the season. Draymond Green is playing his best ball of the season. And I know the depth is an issue because Andrew Bogut especially can't really be a part of this series because Houston's going small so much. I think he'll be fine if they advance in, in the next round. But Houston doesn't go deep either. That's the thing. They got six guys playing 20 or more minutes. Shumpert's getting a few minutes. Daniel House, like they're not playing Gerald Green. They're not going deep. So, and they're going to have to chase around a more mobile, if you will, Golden State offense. So I think that can wear them down a little bit. And finally, this, these two games, if it's two, are, they are huge for James Harden and Chris Paul's legacy, especially Chris, because he's older and this could be pretty much the end of his prime. Harden obviously will have times in the future where he can, you know, change the narrative. But at this point in his career, if they don't win this series, then it is going to be a serious mark on both of their legacies for right now. And we'll see how they stand up to that pressure. Mm. I'm sticking with Golden State. I picked them in seven. I'm going to stick uh, stick with them going seven. And I said this to Skip earlier. Would I be shocked if Golden State won in six? No. Considering how James Harden comes up small in, in the most meaningful of ball games? No, absolutely not. We forget that this nucleus, their starting four now, went 73 and 9. This starting four won a championship. Andre Iguodala was the finals MVP. Steph Curry is a two time MVP, league MVP. The last time he won it was unanimous. I think we, uh, unanimously, I think we forget that, that just how good this team was. Kevin Durant, what Kevin Durant did for this team. He made them unbeatable in a seven-game series. Mm. That's what he did because they were already a great team. You don't win 73 games mm. and not be a great team, not have got – and, and now that KD's out, basically they're probably going to start Kevon Looney. Yeah. Well, basically when they won the championships, they started Andrew Bogut. So maybe Looney can't give you defensively what Bogut got, but he's more, more yeah, offensive. He's, he's fine. Yeah. yeah. So don't be surprised. It was like – a burden was lifted once KD went out. They didn't want KD to get hurt. Mm-hmm. Of course not, because he, they know that virtually guarantees them a title. Mm-hmm. But it gave Steph and Clay the ability to not have to worry about whether they were ticking KD off by taking too many shots, mm. because now they don't have anybody to worry about. What are they going to do? Looney think he's going to get 15 shots now? <laughs> Draymond going to get an extra eight shots? Uh, uh, Iggy? No. Mm. But watch how the ball moves mm. tonight. Okay. Watch how these picks Hmm. get set tonight. Hmm. So, James Harden, you better be on your best behavior. And see, I, I'm going to disagree. You let, look, I don't believe Chris Paul is in his prime anymore. We hadn't seen that Chris Paul for a long period of time. But James Harden is not going to get any easier because what historically great player that's playing now going to want to play with that? That dribble, 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 step back, dribble, dribble, dribble. No. Who going to play with that? Well, it's, their team is pretty much – I mean, we know Daryl Morey moves around and might change things, but they're not getting rid of Chris Paul. Mm. They can't. Yeah, he, that mm. contract. Yeah, who, how do you, that's, his contract is mm. – the only contract that's worse is John Walls. Mm. Both of those, you eating those, bro. Them goofball contracts, mm. you're going to look goofy eating them. Mm. <laughs> you love that goofball. <laughs> <laughs> Today, that's your word. Yeah. This week, it's his word. Right. New you, word of the week. You also, you also know that one? You also know this series? I'm picking Houston to win both you Game your, your 6 argument. and Game 7 only because I picked them to win before the series started because I will bet not one drop of dew on either game. I don't trust either game. And I'm with both of you. I will not at all be surprised if it's over tonight. But this is interesting to me about the man we just you guys were just talking about, Kevin Durant. Is he the cake or the icing? Is he this, you know? But here, here's the point. It shocked me that Steve Kerr has already ruled Kevin Durant out of a potential Game 7 with a calf strain. Because to me, today's medical is so advanced that that if you have that much time, if you have 
Sunday. You, you, you go all the way to we'll Sunday, so how many hours? Thursday, you'd Friday, have 30, Saturday. Okay, so, so if you have 24-hour heat and ice and stem treatments, right. you, you know, the mm -hmm. electrostimulation right. treatment, and deep tissue massage, if it's strained, it's probably in some kind of spasm where mm -hmm. you have the, the right. muscle spasm. Release it'll, it. It'll let go. Some, yes. It'll just magically, I, I know this, it'll just yes. let go. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden you say, not, oh, wait a second, I'm okay. Steve Kerr is showing no fear, no desperation. He's basically saying, let's just shelf Kevin for the, fi the conference <laughs> finals. Like, let's yeah. just make sure we don't have to have Kevin for game seven. Now, again, maybe they're just saying that, and maybe he would make a magical entrance. Okay. You going to pull a will of wheat read maybe, on us? Maybe. <laughs> but, but it seemed to me like Steve Kerr is like, you hear that, Houston? Yeah, right. yeah, That's well, like, we don't even need Kevin Durant for you bums. That is correct, because <laughs> they saw up close what happened to James Harden when they there was no Kevin Durant, and it's his game. Here, here, this is your game yes. to win, right? Yes. And what did he do? He disappeared in, in ways we've never seen him disappear. He usually just flames out by going 0 for 5 from 3. This time he just said, I'm not going to shoot. I'm just, I'm just not going to shoot. I'm, I'm going to stay out of harm's way mm -hmm. this time. And again... The, you're right. His legacy is teetering tonight, and if in fact they get to a game seven, but especially the closeout game six at home, because we've seen him just epic fail in closeouts. Closeout 2015 at Golden State in the conference finals, he he had an NBA playoff record 12 turnovers. And, and in that game, he shot two for 11, 0 for three from three. And then the, the classic game, the, the worst of all, was the 2017 against my Spurs, game yep. six at Houston. There's no number two and no Tony Parker. And they lost by 39 because he scored 10 points, two for 11 from the field, two for nine from three. It was just it's six turnovers. And to me, the most telling stat in those two games you mentioned mm -hmm. was 11 field goal attempts. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Okay, that's it. 11. Okay, so he's just not going to shoot it. How about last year? They're still up three to two with no Chris Paul after they yeah. lost him in game five. So you got two games. You got one at home and one at Golden State to win, to, to advance, right? To mm -hmm. go to the yeah. finals. And what did he do? He shot six for 25 combined from three in those two games. It's, it's horrendous. He shot two for 13 in game seven at Golden State from three. If you remember, if we go all the way back to when they went to the, uh, the, this, the finals and he was in OKC, yep. he had that tremendous game one. You he remember did. from game yep. two yep. through five? He, he was, he, 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 there was a wanted poster up for right. him. And I, I had given him a pass mm. on that because he yeah. was so young. Uh, right. right. Uh, I got it. But no, it does right. seem to be a pattern. Mm. And if, if he comes up small and they lose, Imagine next season for him. He could average 34 yeah. points and, and yeah. do all this that he okay. did this year, It'll and mean none nothing. of it's going to okay. matter. He's going to go down in stone if, if he flames out tonight as nothing but a regular season wonder, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because he's just shown you again and again, and I told Shannon earlier, what I love about the NBA playoffs, especially in seven-game series, they either reveal or expose your basketball backbone. Who are you really, James Harden? Mm -hmm. And and tonight is the night for him at home with no Kevin Durant. You're a seven and a half point favorite. Right? Are you open to? I think it's gotten bet down to seven because a lot of people are saying, I don't know. A lot of in Houston right now, they are fearing the beard for the wrong reason because they're <laughs> fearing what he might not do right, tonight. Right, right. You better come up big. You better come up big. And, yeah. and the flip side of that is Steph's legacy, his post-game legacy is on the line. You still make a case that in 2015 he should have been the finals MVP. Iggy was. Yeah. But, but he's not had great moments. And he had a really great one the other night to position them to, to, to do this tonight, right? Yeah. So yeah. this, this the, is going to be The his last game. 16, 17 minutes of that ball game, Ooh, he went goal. bonkers. Oh, yep. It was mm. big time. Remember and, what he was on pace to do before Kevin Durant went there. I know they lost that finals. But that regular season, I had never seen – you had Allen Iverson talking about, I've never seen anything like this. When he averaged 30, was unanimous MVP. Yeah. Tim Legler, who we worked with, mm -hmm. you know, who I, I have great respect for his knowledge. I think this was an overstatement, but he was talking about he could be one of the best three players of all time. I mean, but that's – that's how dynamic he was, mm -hmm. and let's see if he can recapture that because none of those guys are old other than Iguodala. None of them are old. They're older. Right. So the question is, are they still as good 
as they used to be, hmm. and can they be? So we'll see. I just have a feeling they feel real good about themselves going back there. Tonight. They feel real good about who they're playing. Yeah, they do. Huh. <laughs> I, I don't think they believe in James or fear James. But I was at just all. thinking, yeah. they, why would they? No. At this point. And remember, they went there on March, March 13th. 13th. No Kevin Durant and Stephen Clay just said, watch this. And it was a close game, but they won at 106 104. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This it, has to be one of the biggest games in Harden's career, right? I mean, it, those it, fans it, are I, I think it is several, but yeah. But I, I say be. this is the biggest. This yep. is the biggest. Yep. If, if they don't get it you, done. You're either going to atone or you're just going to reinforce your regular yeah. season wonder record. Well, uh, well, he, well, he goofed last six and seven last year. Mm. What, yeah, about that, what about that game six against San Antonio in your building when Kawhi didn't play? He goofed that one off. Hmm. I think the fact that he has such a historic regular season, such a great season, that I mean, look, it just if if this if he's in this position next year, it'll be the biggest game too. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. it's just it, the more he keeps doing well in the regular season, but folding in the playoffs. Hmm. Okay. Well, someone else didn't have the best playoff performance. Kyrie Irving. Does he need to act hmm. a little bit more like Batman? Hmm. Uh, I'll explain exactly who said that. No mercy. So the Celtics were eliminated in five games by the Bucks on Wednesday, and a lot of people are pointing the finger at Kyrie Irving as the reason why. He shot just 35% in the series, and yesterday, former Celtic Kendrick Perkins was on the herd and went after Kyrie. Take a listen. The way Kyrie went about it, you know, just, you know, okay, yeah, I struggled. Okay, on to the next game, and kind of like the I don't care attitude, and, you know, just – Basically, I mean, throughout the whole process, I mean, he was just, I thought he had got it, but he was just a bad leader, and he he, he didn't represent what Celtic Pride was about. I mean, and it was proven that, to, in my opinion, he's not a Batman. I mean, he's a great player. Kyrie is an elite player, but he's not a Batman. He's a Batman when he's on the team with LeBron, but he's not a Batman. He can't carry his own team. All right, Chris Broussard <laughs> still with us. Chris, uh, what would be the best fit for Kyrie in free agency? First, do you guys think Kyrie will step to Ke Kendrick? <laughs> no. I would. I mean, Kendrick 6'11", 300. Don't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I say this with my head and with my heart because – Maybe, you know, I, I worked in New York, lived in New York, covered the Knicks. I know what it would mean for New York and the NBA. I know fans outside of New York think the Knicks are garbage. Mm -hmm. But what it would mean for the league if New York was great. So I think the best ca case for Kyrie this summer is to go to New York with Kevin Durant. I would love to see that. I second, my second choice I think best for him would be, believe it or not, stay in Boston if you're sure you're going to be able to trade for A.D., Anthony Davis, and get him to stay. Because Kyrie, Kyrie and A.D. are close. So if you can get Anthony Davis there and get some of those young guys out of there that had issues with Kyrie, then I think that's a good look. Third, I would say L.A. with LeBron. Here's the problem to me, and I've been told this, Kyrie's not going to rejoin LeBron. They're cool now, they made up, but he's not going to go back to him. But... The problem, I think they'd be a great tandem, but the narrative that you went and joined Big Brother with dog Kyrie, hmm. you don't have that with, with Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. You're, you're kind of like a 1A. I think their games would fit well together. They're great friends. Kyrie's from the area. You got to, maybe they'll get the top pick. Yeah. You either keep Zion or you could trade him for AD. So I, I like him in New York. I think that's the best fit. Mm. Me? I With did. KD. Yeah, well, not by well, well, clearly, I mean, he's not a Batman, so going to Gotham wouldn't be very good. <laughs> considering New York is Gotham not City. Alone, I don't know if that's going to be good. I like to see him reunite. You see, I know a guy that went to a 73 and 9 team and didn't give a crap what someone said about him or what his legacy was going to be hmm. because it was the best thing for him. Hmm. Now, me and KD and Kyrie in New York, two moody, irritable guys. Having to deal with the media if they, after they lost the game? Is that going to be – Here's the thing, though. We know how much Kyrie don't like the, dislikes the media and all the attention. Mm -hmm. That narrative – and I, I'm with you. I, I would want LeBron to try, to try to kill that narrative. 
But that wouldn't go away. You went back to Big Brother with your tail between your legs. Well, he said, hold on. That's what it would look he like. He said he wanted to leave Cleveland to run his own team. How does going to the Knicks to join KD says, I'm running my own team? You're combining. Just like when LeBron went to Miami, it wasn't viewed as the same thing as Kevin Durant okay. going to the Golden okay. State because he was a bunch of guys were coming We'll together. be combining again. We're combining. You <laughs> took it apart. Look, me. I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I think that'd be the third best option. Kyrie That's found out the hard way that it's just not a great talent that makes a great leader. Leadership is about knowing what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and where to say it at. Because mm -hmm. Kyrie said a lot of things that rub these young guys the wrong way because he said it publicly. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer. If there's something that you got some, something to say to a player, a mm -hmm. fellow player, teammate, tell him private. Mm -hmm. Don't go in front of the media mm -hmm. because it's never going to be perceived the way you meant it. And maybe you meant it the way it was perceived. Mm -hmm. But them guys are not going to take very kindly to that. So you see, LeBron took a lot of them blows that Ky Kyrie got. See, Kyrie started taking punches that LeBron James used to take for him. And he got an opportunity. Like, he ain't like that all of a sudden. Mm. See, that's what made LeBron a great leader, Skip. See, I've been mm. telling y'all that everybody knows LeBron a great leader. Everybody can't lead. See, you can be born great or you can have greatness thrust upon you. Mm. Leadership, you born to lead. Mm. Born. When you go to the military, they don't say, okay, you know what? Jenny's going to be the leader or Skip's going to be the leader. No, they say, no. Nah. We let, we let him figure it out. Wait a and, second. He just led the Lakers right to the couch. Get, hold on. Get up, tell me, hold on. Did he? Let, let me, yeah, he didn't get very far. You know what? I'm telling my story. Can I tell my story? <laughs> Sorry. In the military, they don't, yeah. they don't say you're going to mm. lead. You're going to be a leader. Okay. They say, you'll figure it out. And then it, all of a sudden, hmm. that's what Okay. You're oh, what, you're the leader? <clears throat> you just gave I yourself. Been. It doesn't work that way. You just I said. I would have been. I got it. <laughs> I am with Mr. Broussard on this one. I believe that it should be KD Kyrie in NYC. It just makes all the sense in the world for both of them. And I believe both would, would be able to handle the New York media just fine because they've both been under heavy scrutiny and criticism. And somehow it just fuels both of them. When they get on the court, they just play. How do they handle the media now, Skip? Okay. Well, they just, sometimes they don't. <laughs> but sometimes well, they've been the, rude. The, the thing and, about KD is it doesn't hurt his play. It, 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 it fuels it, him. Yeah, right. He, he rises hurt his to play. it. But maybe so, not Kyrie. He, yeah. Well, but here's the point. <laughs> If it's KD and Kyrie in New York and they do hit the lottery and land Zion, whether they keep Zion or trade him straight up, as you suggest, for AD or one of you guys suggested. Yeah, I'd be AD, yeah. Okay. Then in New York, Kyrie wouldn't even have to be Robin. He could be Alfred. <laughs> no, he could be Alfred. <laughs> Am I right? Oh, no, no, he could be Alfred. Well, yeah, no, you are right. No. He so he just, just he could just so up he gonna go, man, he here's the, he gonna go from being the boy wonder to the butler. <laughs> <laughs> not only is he I'm not serious. Bruce, not only is he not Bruce Wayne and Batman, no. now he's he gonna be the butler. <laughs> Oh, and man, he could be a happy God, butler. God. He'd be a really happy kid. <laughs> oh, right? he Am go I for that. right? No, he ain't going for that. The, yeah. fun, the interesting thing about the three of those guys, yeah. and, and it, it get, even if they don't get AD, it's true with KD and Kyrie. None of those three guys really are great, like, with the media. You're right. LeBron would take all the bows and arrows and mm -hmm. all that. None of those guys. But I just think with two of them or three of them sharing yeah. the battles with mm -hmm. the media, I think it'll be easier. Okay. And then the other thing Kendrick said that was amusing to me, he said that Kyrie is Batman only when he's on a team with LeBron. <laughs> well, well, wait a second. <laughs> that, that means he's really not... Batman, do they kind of share Batman suit? Are they, they, they wear it on different nights? In other words, they... he means that he's only a superhero yeah. when he's with wow. another superhero, he, yeah. superhero yeah. that has even more powers. Hmm. I and don't LeBron think was that. willing to give LeBron was willing to give him Shed the clutch it. moment. And told him, okay. you, you just, hey, I was you trying, to get it, trying to partake all this wisdom on the closer. kid. Mm -hmm. He would go stand in the corner. You saw it, Skip. LeBron but, go stand in the corner and let Kyrie dance on him. Okay, but he needed Kyrie to dance on him because he needed a closer. And Kyrie did close for him, but that's all Kyrie had to worry about doing is, yeah. I'll just close. Uh, I don't have to lead. I don't have to deal with the media. So, I'll just close. So in other words, you can't close when you're 60s. You see, you see what Skip tried to do? See, Skip wants to everybody to save, to save LeBron's legacy. See, Kyrie is that guy supposedly that saved a drowning man, but he couldn't swim himself and couldn't save himself because he went to Boston, the very situation he asked for, and guess what? No. Water over his head and he couldn't come up out of it. Mm -mm. No, that's a whole different thing. You, that's a whole different kind of swimming that you're talking about is to lead. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm going to give Kyrie this because obviously he didn't do a great job leading this year. 
but they were in a tough situation because when you got a bunch of young guys on rookie deals, mm -hmm. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they Terry Rozier, their main priority, as much as they want to win and all that, get is them. to show that I'm a star so I can get Matt that next deal or yep. close. And so that's a conflict that he had to deal with. That that can be tough and plus what in the they, locker room. What they were without him. Right. Look at all the shots that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and Rozier got when Kyrie wasn't there. Now he comes in and you get Rozier going back to the bench. You yep. get Jalen Brown for a time was coming off the bench. Mm. And they're like, wait a minute. We went to game seven in the Eastern Conference Finals. Did you see what I did? And now he comes back. Did you hear what Rozier told Yahoo after they just lost to Milwaukee? No. He said, I'm one of the best point guards in the league. He didn't say, I'm like, I should be a starter. Right. I'm one of the best point guards in the league. He said, nobody sacrifices as much as me. So that's the type of tension that you had in that situation. Okay. If Kyrie could have lived up it, over the last four games, he shot the ball all-time bad. Yeah. Like it's historically bad what he did. If, if he had rose and shone and started making his threes, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. But he flamed but out. But this notion now that these great young talent, because remember, oh, they got Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Now all of a sudden, what makes the Pelican want those guys? Unless you think they all got Kyrie'd. That they got right. pushed into the background by a guy who, who tried to take the team over and failed to lead it. And Griffin knows Kyrie as well as anybody. And I know he, he likes him, but huh. he might have an extra insight on how much he thinks Kyrie was a part of it. All game. I know is that uh, all of a sudden, Jason Tatum doesn't look like the... Oh, he's so much better than Kyle Kuzma. All of a sudden, Jalen Brown doesn't look... He's so much better than Brandon Ingram. Are we sure about that? Well, the problem, the Lakers guys folded too. Yeah. Oh, their, their, their value has Oh, really? Well. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's not also, it wasn't all LeBron. So LeBron not didn't all. get that later. Not all. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it ooh. wasn't all his fault, for sure. You know what? In year 16, hmm. the man averaged more points, rebounds, and assists than KD and Kawhi. But hmm. that's none of my business. I don't even hmm. know why I brought that up. At age 34, Michael Jordan and, and LeBron was 34 this year. Michael Jordan won the scoring title and was first team all defense. So 34 to 34. Stop doing that, Skip. Because you know LeBron had played the equivalent of three more seasons He's at the same Iron age. Man. He is Iron Man. He's the fittest, according to you, the fittest athlete we've ever seen. <laughs> he spends say, yeah. two million a year on his fitness. Okay. Right? Yes. So how can you start wearing out? You're only 34. Okay, well, Kevin Durant's missing the playoffs. Yeah. So it happens. It happens, Skip. An injury mm. happens. Yeah. yeah, but even when he was healthy, his, his, all the numbers are career lows. Well, career, well, all the second-level numbers. All well, no, I'm ER. first level. no, yeah. no I, don't need to go, I don't need to go to college. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm graduated high school. Mm -hmm. His first level numbers say 27, 8, and 8. Mm -hmm. And he stepped off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like to step off a cliff? At Name a guy that wouldn't the like to step off a cliff. The only number I care about is in the games he played, they were 28 and 27. Well, Do you like that? 28 and 27? You, hear, you, see how you, see, you see how when he said they stuck his chest out? I want that kind of energy next mm. year this time. Okay. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to say it. Yep. I want you to say it. Just that same energy. Yep. Keep that hey, passion. You mm. know LeBron is going after somebody else. He was in Philadelphia during this series talking to Kawhi. He was? Yes. <laughs> yeah! Philadelphia? <laughs> waiting for Our man response. Stephen he A. Was? mentioned it a couple days ago. Yesterday, I think. And then I, I got it confirmed yesterday. He was in Philadelphia so talking to Don't Kawhi. worry about this. What's he doing there? Don't worry about it. You talking know what he's doing. Your man. Right. You know what he's doing. At. How would you like that? If Ooh. they Ooh. those two joint forces. Maybe he's greasing the skids for a little deal where he gets traded to Philly. Is that possible? No. You brought that up yesterday. No. Oh, Be a good basketball look. Yeah. No. Basketball, <laughs> well, two, nah, he wants to stay in Number two and 23. Could you handle that? Ooh, yeah, I can handle that. <laughs> you probably have to be. Yeah, you would probably have to be. Oh, it's going to bother you. Oh, oh, a, lot a lot of good content. A lot of good content. Hold on. What, what, what were the Spurs? The Spurs finished seventh this year. Yeah. Oh, they dropped down again, so oh, they probably really? ate or missed the playoff. No, oh, I don't think so. I With think Dejante so. Dejounte Murray coming back, you going to be in big White trouble. With Derek White emerging. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's who's coming. Yeah. That's who's coming. You watch. be the best backcourt in basketball. Just watch. Hold on. Yep. Is Dame and CJ retired? Yep. Is Stephen Clay Steph retired? Clay? You, have, you have to play defense, too. Hold on. You have to play both ways. And I would love it if number two got caught in the crossfire of being the scapegoat 
for the Los Angeles All Lakers. All drama. Chris, is, thank is you. Every time it'd be uh, like, well, LeBron, it's not LeBron. his fault. It's his fault. I would love that. <laughs> is he going to play? Here's the thing. LeBron can do all the recruiting he wants, guys, but there is drama with the Lakers. You know what? There's actually a protest going on this afternoon. So, Shannon, I don't, I'm not sure if you're mm. heading there. We're going to talk yeah. about what the fans are doing this afternoon. We'll discuss that yeah. next. You're going to be out there with your son? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm leading the protest. <laughs> No mercy. Here is the latest on the Lakers soap opera. A rally is actually scheduled outside of Staples Center later today to protest Jeannie Buss's decision making and the amount of influence Kurt and Linda Rambis have had on the team. Now, Yahoo's Vincent Goodwill says Jeannie should sell the franchise, writing, quote, the favored daughter of the late Dr. Jerry Buss seems clueless in how to lead. This is a mess of massive proportions and headed into free agency. It's the worst possible look for a franchise trying to attract star free agents and resemble a model, stable organization. Shannon, have the Lakers hit rock bottom? Hmm. Before I answer yes or no, I agree with everything that gentleman wrote. Hmm. And to answer that question, yes. But here's the thing. No. I, how do I say this? Skip, I'm not so sure it's not going to even get even worse. Mine. How about that? Because there's the possibility we're about to have the, 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 the draft order announced. No head coach. And then what for just want to come into this kind of dysfunction, mm -hmm. Skip? She does it. And this is what happens mm -hmm. when you have people in positions that they're unqualified to hold, yep. this is what you get. Mm -hmm. Linda and Kurt Rambis should not be in, involved in this decision-making. Rob Palenka should have never got the job. Jeannie got the job because she's the, mm -hmm. the daughter yep. of the dad that owned the team. And this is, what, and this is where we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine when Dr. Buss was alive, they're having a protest because the organization is being so poorly run? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if they had a protest when Jim. That just lets you know, I don't even believe they had a protest when Jim was running the team. I don't remember one. It's kind of sad. And so now, like oh, that. Jeannie's going to bring stability. She's so much better. Really, I can't tell. Hmm. I see better than I hear. I heard what they told me, Jeannie, but I know what I see. Mess. Mess. That's what they got going on here, Skip Bayless. Mm. And I, you know what? As a matter of fact, I need to hurry up and get up out of here because I need to make sure I make that trip. I'm headed down to L.A. I'm going to be right out there with me a sign. Are you? Yep. <laughs> You, you should lead that program. Nah, yeah, it I'm would leading be it. Funny. Yep, with my with my uh, LeBron jersey on. Mm. Give the a one speech. He, the one he, I got to take it out the frame. Mm. The one he autographed for me. Oh, sorry. Whoops. Really? When'd you get that autograph? Hmm. I said that out loud. What's your yeah. sign gonna say? Like throw genie under the bus <laughs> what is your or something sign like that? Say? <laughs> what would your sign say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Jeannie must go. Jeannie must go. Yep. Okay. It's come to and that. And take Linda and Kurt with you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay. Skip. It has come to this for LeBron James. He is now playing for a franchise whose fans are staging a protest in the parking lot outside that franchise's famed arena in which championships have been won. Yes. How could it come to that for, even for LeBron? He didn't sign up for this. No. I still feel sorry for him. And I feel sorrier for those fans who are protesting because I've been through this before with Jerry Jones in the, the, the dry years in Dallas, <laughs> the dry hole years in Dallas. I've, I've seen it happen with James Dolan, the owner of the New York Knicks. Sure. These are all family-held businesses. Okay. And the problem is for the fans, they're not government offices. You can't vote Jeannie out of her office. Correct. Right? You can't because she owns it. And she still, I'm pretty sure, loves owning it, even though it can be a lot of shame heaped on you. Uh, th there are going to be some nights when you go to a restaurant when people are going to heckle hey, you. Or, yeah, she can't hear that shame with that money kind of... Okay. Which brings me to the bottom line of this. The only way to really drive home your protest, if you're a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers, is unfortunately to quit watching and buying the Lakers, right? That's the only way you can really drive it home mm -hmm. and have impact is if enough fans say, we won't wow. watch anymore, right. we will quit buying Laker gear anymore, sure. and at, over time, we won't go to the games, games anymore, we won't buy tickets anymore. If the building gets half empty and the TV ratings plunge, trust me, she'll be in trouble. She, she'll have to sell at some point because 
sh she'll have to admit, I'm losing too much money. Right. Is that going to happen? No, it's not going to happen. Right. Because th the these diehard fans, they can't quit watching. They just want it to change. Mm -hmm. They want Jeannie out. Jeannie is not going anywhere. She went to court to oust all of her brothers. Right. She, that's how she seized control right. of this franchise. And I think she's having the time of her life. How about this? Though, how about Skip? How no. about we don't want her out? How about we want her out of the way? How about that? Yeah. Well. Get out. Just get out of the way. Hire, why won't you hire someone mm -hmm. that's not your friend and not the not the uh, your friend's husband that's going to make decisions in the best interest? See, they're going to tell Jeannie what she wants to hear, not what Jeannie needs to know. There's the difference between the two. And so most times when people become successful, mm -hmm. you don't hire your best friend and put them in a title they're unqualified mm -hmm. to have. Okay. You hire people that have your best interest okay. at, I, at I, heart. I got it. For years, Cowboy fans have nearly rioted over Jerry Bring in somebody who knows football to run this franchise. You need to fire yourself from being the G GM of this franchise. Right. But I will give Jerry this, and I've always defended him on this count. He did play college football at the highest level. Mm -hmm. He was on a national championship team as a starter at offensive guard. 1960 Arkansas, right? 64. 64, 64, 64 Arkansas. With Jimmy Johnson mm -hmm. on that team. But they okay. were starters for a team that won the national championship mm -hmm. by vote. You know, that <laughs> wasn't, yeah. you know, yeah. that those were the days different. by vote. But, but still, he at least did that much. Mm -hmm. So has he made some bad decisions? Yes. Has he hired a, a great draft master and Will McClay that sort of changed life inside the franchise? Because yes. There, because there was a law skip. Mm -hmm. You saw the Jimmy Johnson years. Yeah. And then you saw when he fired Jimmy and he took over, and now you see the Will McClay years. Okay. So you see the vast difference in between. Although the, he and Barry Switzer did win a championship yeah. together. With, obviously, a lot of players picked and schooled by Jimmy. With the exception okay. of Larry Allen, most of the players okay. were, were okay. Jimmy's you, left okay. to hold over. I, I will give you that. But the problem is, people wanted Jerry out for years, and he, he, he's having too much fun. That's, his well, that's Jeannie, how he's known, Skip. Hey, trust me, Jeannie's having too much fun right now because she's become the primary decision maker with Linda Rambis and Kurt for the Los Angeles Lakers. You don't think that's a rush? You don't yeah. think this is, this is the, the time of her life? Let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip, Jerry Jones owned with this, had the same was worth the same amount, yep. and he didn't own the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Would anybody know who he was? Okay, well, that's why he bought the Cowboys. I wrote a whole book about this <laughs> in 1989. He was making millions in the oil fields. He was striking it rich left and right, and he went to an oil and gas uh, convention in Cabo San Lucas, and he woke up one morning, and he just said, my, my life is just empty. There's no fun here because you can only make so much money. And he heard, he read a little blurb in the San Diego Union Tribune that the Cowboys are for sale. And he called New York from Cabo and said, hey, I hear, they called Salomon Brothers, who are the brokers for the Cowboys sale. I, I hear the team's for sale. I'm, I'm going to buy it. Huh? The, the guy That's laughed amazing. at him on the phone, but he did. He yeah. pulled it off. Okay? So, and his life changed much for the better. You don't think he's had a whole lot more fun owning the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, considering he spent $130 million to buy it, it's worth $5 billion or 4 Okay, well, then that's a whole other issue. <laughs> you're, you're making even more money running the Cowboys as they just got... You and know, and we've, seen, we've yeah. seen that. Steve Ballmer, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the, the late Paul Allen. Yeah. We see Stan Kroenke. Yeah. We've seen owners, uh, Shad Khan. These guys are worth billions. But we wouldn't know who they, I mean, unless you're that top guy, you know, the Bill Gates, the Jeff Bezos, those yeah. guys, the, you're 100 million, 90 billion. Yeah. But you're getting that little, that, when I say small range, you're getting that 10 billion to 5 I billion. Know. No. Mm. Mm. Nope. I don't know. But you know O'Shea, he ain't got no O'Shea. She ain't got no billion, but ain't no O'Shea. Are you buying a team soon or what? Huh? What kind of team? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I buy, I, all I can afford is a team uniform. <laughs> I can't afford no team. Super fan. Yeah. All right, well, enjoy that rally today, Shannon. Yeah, yeah. Let us know if your gotcha. message is re well received. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Romo, is he on his way to being a two sports this is star? We'll discuss <laughs> that next. No mercy. All right. Here's the thing, guys. Tony Romo is on the course right now at the Byron Nelson in Dallas. Romo is even par through six holes, but he's still just in 146th place. Yesterday, he shot a 76, which included a chip in for Eagle. Before the tournament started, though, Romo had 10,000 to 1 odds to win, but 46 people actually bet on Tony through Superbook USA, which was the most of any 
golfer. Mm. Shannon, are oh. you surprised by all the attention Romo is getting? Mm. No. 46 people <laughs> donated <laughs> to a worthy <laughs> cause. They, in Vegas, they call it betting. I call it donating because Tony Romo was not going to win that tournament. So no. Vegas is a worthy cause? <laughs> <laughs> to their worthy cause. Okay. Dangerous cause. You know yeah. what, Skip? No, I'm not surprised. Tony Romo played quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. He was a very, very popular quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys and the NFL. He's very good at what he does. Now, I don't hear him broadcast. I don't listen to the sound. But you tell me he's very good at what he, he does. He is really good. He's and good? you know what? So, no, I am not surprised. Yep. And when we see athletes go out, because remember, Steph Curry tried to make the cut. I think it was on the, uh, uh, the dot-com tour, a uh, uh, lower-level oh, tour. Yeah. Not, it wasn't web.com. Web.com. Web. Like the last two years, their, right. their event in the Bay Area. I remember right. that. So, so we're, I'm not surprised. Uh, it, it's going to garner a lot of attention. Because when we look at an athlete, we like, we do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Westbrook would have made a heck of a running back or DB. Yep. Or this guy would have been a heck of a this or a heck of a that. So we want to see guys branch outside the sport mm -hmm. they play mm -hmm. and see. But, Skip, this is a different animal. My brother's a very avid, uh, avid golfer. Mm -hmm. Plays all the time. And I asked him, I said, Man, he's, like, he's like, bro, it's like the guy at the local blacktop is really, really good. But when he goes up against a pro, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Skip, these guys, this all, Skip. Bubba Watson and Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods, that's all they do. So you think it's just like Bubba Watson can catch a pass, and he might be good uh, 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 for a golfer that's catching passes. But he ain't making no team. Mm -mm. Tony Romo might be good by golfing standards for a normal guy that goes out there and plays with his buddies. Oh, he's really good by those standards. Like, but, really good. But when you go play with no. those goals and do that for guys that do that for a living... <laughs> They beat the brakes off you. I'm amazed that right here, right now, as we speak, there are seven players at a professional golf tournament in Dallas, Texas, that are worse on the scoreboard than, than Tony Romo is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really great. And it's also really, really bad. <laughs> so here's what just kills me about this. I turn on that tournament, because you know I'm a golf nut, yesterday mm -hmm. to watch on the Golf Channel a tournament that I covered for years in Dallas called the Byron Nelson Classic, and it's now moved to a, a course that Tony belongs it's to part of, right? called Trinity Forest, and, and it's a brand-new course in South Dallas. And so he's a member there, so he, he really knows this golf. You familiar with the course. You got that. <laughs> and what do I see yesterday as the coverage opens? Guess who the Tiger Woods was yesterday of the Byron Nelson Classic? It wasn't a pro golfer. It was a quote-unquote amateur named Tony Romo. They followed him every shot through the whole day <laughs> like he was Tiger. He was having the Tiger effect on the Byron Nelson because he's become a much bigger celebrity post-Cowboy playing days than he was as the Cowboy quarterback. Huh. Do you realize for years I just railed on TV at my quarterback. Remember, he's my starting quarterback for 10 years, mm -hmm. Tony Romo. Every year, almost every year, he tried to qualify for the United <laughs> States Open. It's hard because golf, as you well know, is the most time-consuming sport of all. There's nothing close to how much time you have to put in to practicing your putting and your chipping and your short irons and your long irons and your hybrids and your driver. Yeah. It's just so much work, and yet he's obsessed with golf, and it killed his football career in it my humble did. opinion. It did. I, believe, he, I agree. He, he cared more about golf than he did about football. And now we're seeing on full display, live TV on via CBS, every Sunday afternoon, his high football IQ. Unfortunately, it wasn't attached to any better judgment on the football field because he would see it and feel it the right way and yeah. he would see it before it happened. And then he'd say, yeah, but I think I'll try this. Right. No, don't try that. No, you, don't throw that. Skip, you would think for someone that could call and diagnose a play, yeah. why were you always getting picked? Why well, were you getting that, hit in well, your thank back? Thank you. That's the whole point. Now he's a star for his football acumen yeah. when he never was as a Dallas Cowboy. And, and it's, it just kills me that he's become such a celebrity because nobody except me really cared about him trying to qualify for the U.S. Open. Now he's become the, the darling of the golf crowd. <laughs> and again, he's a really good player. Yeah. Steph is a really good player. Yeah. Really good. Steph, There's a lot of uh, two, uh, uh, Ray Allen. And hey, hey, but, but Steph two years ago, it's called the Ellie Mae Classic. It's yeah. web.com, so yeah. it's, it's the minor oh, league yeah. compared yeah. to this. Yeah. But Steph went 74-74, and he tied for 148th. But for me to go out there and shot, shoot 74, that's really good. You know? Yeah, 74 Ooh. is really good. Oh, 
Okay, but it's not really good in this context. No, that's what I'm saying. Okay. The, the only reason why they're called pros. Yeah, but Tony, every time I read an interview, he's he's got this dream in his head like he's going to pull this off. Yeah. He's going to become well, a real player. He's got to focus what? his attention, his competitiveness somewhere. <laughs> you mentioned Steph, a good golfer. Well, yeah. he's a little busy right now doing something else. Will he lead the Warriors to a win tonight? We'll discuss that next. No mercy. Time for our final topic of the day. The Rockets are in a must-win situation tonight in Game 6 against the Warriors. Golden State is up 3-2, but they will be without KD. The Rockets are perfect at home so far in the playoffs, and they're a seven-point favorite. So, Shannon, hmm? what will be the final score tonight? I believe the Rockets get them, Skip Bayless. I'm going 118 to 112. Rockets get a win. Hmm. Stave off elimination and head to the Bay Area for Game 7. Hmm. 118 is a lot of points. Who's going to be scoring all those points? What do you think it's going to be a ninety-point ball game? Uh, I think they're going to have a hard time breaking a hundred. Uh, I'm going to say what I'm going to say with no conviction. I believe that the Rockets, as they did at home in games three and four, especially four, will try to turn this into a football of a basketball game. I think there's going to be a whole lot of bumping and grinding, a whole lot of extreme physicality, and I do not trust James Harden to come up big tonight. I do not trust State Farm Insurance to come up big tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm not sure True. about him. So they need X factors. They need Gerald Green to come off the bench and make five threes. They need my man Austin Rivers to make four threes. They need Tuck to make three Three threes. And That's that 12 get threes, them. and they're not going to get to 118 well, points? I, I'm, I'm going to go lower scoring. I'll go 112, 108, Houston. That was the score of game four, and I got it again. No mercy. Thank you for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Keep an eye out for the weekend edition of the podcast tomorrow morning, featuring this week's best segments. Have a great weekend, everyone. Fox Sports. One of one. one. Of one. Of one.